up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Crazy Ant Farm. Full, full, full disclosure, <laughs> Ace and Little Cam are not with us. Just letting you know. But then Little Cam then, pops up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you leaves nev- again. you oh, never know. Way. You never know. But uh, we got <laughs> a lot of. Week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wacky week, man. It's a wacky it's, week. It's crazy. It's crazy. We got a lot of industry news for you. Our really good interview with Miss Lily Borden. And we have box office predictions, billboard chart toppers, and of course, the word of the day. Yeah, I'm excited about that interview with Lily Borden. Yeah. I mean, if you guys have seen anything recently, like Book Club or The Nun or mm-hmm. anything, I mean, she's been in those and she just is awesome. Yeah. So, really excited to talk to her. Yeah. Definitely. I just have All this right. real big feeling. I'm going to mispronounce the word of the day so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, do, can you see into the future, sound man? Yeah. Can yeah. you? <laughs> All right, let's start it's off not with based a little on past word of the day butchers, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Get some confidence, man. <laughs> <laughs> let's start off with some industry news. All right. Uh, mm. Oh, right yeah. off the bat. All right, you want me to take this one? Go, go okay. For it, go so, for it. as you guys know, um, CBS, you know, got rid of uh, Les Moonves. Yep, yep. Um, we still don't know. If he's gonna get his golden parachute payday, but you know they made this big statement, he's out. Got rid of him. You know, Don't. We're, we're investigating him and all that. Well, eh, they, apparently they really didn't. So because oh. it just came out that CBS is retaining old Les for up to two more years, and here's my favorite part: as an unpaid advisor, while still supplying him with his office and paying for security detail for him. But if he gets his golden parachute of $125 million, is that really an unpaid advisor? Right. He's basically still running CBS just without the title. I mean, like... That's ridiculous. If he's gone, you don't keep him in the office and have him tell you what to do. Yeah, if anything, they'll just move his office to, like, the last office on the left. It's his office. (laughs) In the corner. They're supplying him with an office, Uh but I want want to see what that door looks like. It just says advisor. (laughs) Advisor. Mm, I I don't think so, man. I I think he's going to stay right where he was in the office that he had. I mean, I just... What's that's so full of shit? Yeah, like I what mean, the hell? It, it, get rid of him. If you're exactly. gonna get rid of him, get rid of him. If you're gonna keep him, keep him. But exactly. don't do this whole unpaid exactly. advisor. Maybe there's a disclosure agreement where he has a lot more control in the company than what was previously known. Oh, he's got a lot of control in the company. There's no doubt about that. But my thing is, is are they doing this as a preempt yeah. of? If the investigation shows he is innocent, yeah. they can say, "Wait a minute, right? Nope, it, he's going to stay on as CEO yeah. because he's innocent." Exactly. And we're not, I mean, are they kind of letting him linger around just in case? That's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, or is honestly. there going to be payouts? Like he's going to pay off a whole bunch of people to get out of the trouble? Mm. No, well, I mean, because he adamantly denies it. He admitted to the two relationships, but said they were the consensual, consensual and denies all the rest. So. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting yeah. to say the very least. But yeah. I still want to go on record and say much respect to Julie Chen Moonves, Moonves for standing by him and focusing on protecting her young son yeah. from all of this crap. Hell because yeah. regardless of whether Dad did it or not, however many decades ago, he hasn't done it that we know of since then. Exactly. And the son shouldn't have to hear all the crap exactly. in the media and go through all this stuff. So much respect for her for focusing on where the focus needs to be, which is keeping that child sheltered from all the crap that's going on. So exactly. Well done, Julie Chen. All right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, um, more uh, happy news. Let's uh, brighten everybody's day a little bit. Steve Irwin's family has landed their own series on the animal planet. Crikey! Crikey! <laughs> Carrying on his legacy. I think this is awesome because he was just a great person and great for the animal community and going around the world like helping all these people and all these animals. And his family's really good too. Yeah, yeah. Like family. Just overall his good person. Yeah. Bindi. Like, yeah. I mean, her, I mean, she, I think she became the world sweetheart when she was on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, you know? yeah and, and then all that stuff she tweeted about her dad and keeping on his legacy and like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. with the environmental protections and things like that. I just, yeah. yeah, they just seem, and then his wife too, she's, I don't think she ever remarried or got with anybody. No, I mean, yeah. it's always been nothing, but I think just a full continuation of Steve. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Honestly. I think they're like the embodiment of Steve and what he stood for. Yeah. And, who, and so this Seriously. idea of the show coming back with them as the family carrying that on. Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. Huge fan of the family. Huge fan of what they do. 
Um, I you think, know who else was a huge fan? Who? Sorry, I know you're gonna. Were you about to say? I was just about to say that. Yeah, well, because we share. Yeah. Right? But yeah, that was a great picture with you there. Like, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. If Wolverine <laughs> loves you, then uh, I love yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> we're all good. <laughs> they are the greatest showman. I mean. <laughs> What the hell just happened? Well, it happens a lot. Don't worry yeah, about it. it yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Ryan Coogler teams up with LeBron James to produce Space, Man, or Space Jam 2. Mm. Oh. Mm. Now, hey, what, what has uh, Ryan Coogler been involved in? Oh, in the past? just that small little film, I think. Just you the know, small that one. That one about that black superhero. Yeah. Anybody ever heard of that one? <laughs> you know, Black Panther? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Creed. Um, mm. Fruitvale Station. See? This guy is a genius director. Yeah. He's a genius creator. And LeBron James, by the way, I think now the count is up to like 4,762,000 projects in LA that yeah. he's got going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Honestly. All kidding aside, he's like lining them up. Yeah, dude. seriously. If anybody thought he went to LA to play basketball, no. eh. <laughs> he went to LA for the opportunity. <laughs> like, yeah. exactly. And I mean, he's a smart man. He yeah. is. Did you honestly. see what he said though? He made a, he made the comment that uh, Space Jam Two is not a sequel; it's a reboot. Oh, which now. has everybody asking, "But what about Mike? Yeah, you know, what what, about Mike? what's you up? With so that? that's going to be interesting. Hell Let me yeah, see how that goes down. But if you've attached Coogler, I'm all in. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I was iffy about a Space Jam sequel because yeah. I thought, eh, man, I loved Space Jam, right? And I was iffy about, but. Coogler, man, you can't go wrong with Coogler. Yeah. I've loved everything he's ever done from Fruitvale Station on. So, Hell yeah. I mean. Well, and it even says right here that LeBron James has series in the works with NBC, the CW, HBO, and he's working on a British crime drama right now with uh, Drake, uh, Hot 100, dude. <laughs> Guy. <laughs> I got that person over there. Yeah. And working on a limited series with CJ Walker and Octavia Spencer for Netflix. So, nice. damn, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have time to play basketball? That's the thing. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, how's that going to happen? But, yeah, I mean, listen to the names you're listing off. Mm -hmm. Drake, Octavia Spencer, Ryan Coogler. I yeah. mean, that's insane. He is lining up some serious exactly. entertainment people. It's really crazy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bravo, man! I mean, that that hustle. Stop playing sports at some point. You know exactly, what I mean? that's not something you can but do forever. Again, I want to give credit where credit is due. You see, so many of these guys come from the backgrounds that LeBron came from, and they get in there and they get all this money and millions and millions and millions of dollars, and they yeah. squander it. They buy countless cars, mm, countless yeah. homes. They pay entourages ridiculous amounts of money. Honestly, then they retire and they realize they don't have that anymore, and it's all gone. Exactly. Yeah. He's one of the smart ones, like you've seen in the past with Michael Jordan mm -hmm. or so many of that are investing their money. Exactly. They're taking the money that they have now because they know they won't have it forever, and exactly. they're doing things with it to continue to. So much respect for that. I mean, this guy is going to have, a, yeah. I think, a long career in Hollywood. Yeah. So I is think he going to be do... on screen? Is he acting? Uh, uh, I, I believe don't... for the Space Jam sequel or the reboot, he is. I want. I want to see how that is because. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but actor or athletes are notoriously horrible actors. Yeah. I've seen them on shows and things like that, and they're always, not always, usually really bad. Yeah. Did you Sometimes. see uh, Amy Schumer's train wreck? He was in that. Oh, mm -hmm. no. It, yeah. He was pretty, he, he had a he funny did. part. Yeah, he was pretty, yeah. He was pretty good. Yeah. As long as they don't good. seem awkward. If exactly. That's the main thing that's I noticed is that they rush their lines and they seem like you can tell they memorized them. Yeah, exactly. And so as long as he doesn't do that, I think he should be fine. Exactly. I mean, there's been some that have made the transition, yeah, though, some. like yeah. Alex Karras and yeah. OJ. Um, <laughs> and OJ. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> Tavia got that mass murderer uh, theme yeah, going on today. Oh, alleged. I'm sorry. He was found not guilty. Alleged. He played football and then he acted. No, he did. You're right. And Bubba Smith. What about and John Cena? John oh, Cena. John yeah. Cena. Yeah. Or what? Let's, yeah, like, going back, like Go Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he really oh, kind of start yeah. it like yeah. even before Bubba Smith and them, and right? He was he, on like, New Girl. Yeah, yeah, and he, and he tussled with Bruce Lee. Oh, man. I mean, come on. I, there are some. You're right. There and, are uh, some. But some of them are just so awkward. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Don't no. forget Scooby-Doo. Yeah, no. I completely <laughs> agree. Some of them just try to jump in, and you're like, no, don't do it. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Someone should have told you to just be a producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Just put the money oh, where the money goes and reap the benefits. Like, just, like, just, yeah. Wasn't the James McEnroe tennis star? Wasn't he pretty decent as an actor, too? Oh, yeah, the guy that always got mad at everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was in uh, Mr. D. Deeds. He was hilarious yeah. in Mr. Deeds. Yeah, well, he was married to an actress for a long oh, time. Oh, really? So maybe he picked some stuff up. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. trained him at home. Yeah, yeah. Tate, Tatum O'Neill. So, oh, yeah. there you go. There um, you go. Uh, this next one I find really interesting because we keep talking about this the battle, the battle between uh, Netflix and. Um, and uh, Disney. Disney. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> 
<laughs> Disney, <laughs> bro. <laughs> and uh, Marvel and DC. Talk in the mic. And Marvel and DC. Oh, I was drinking coffee. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but Good like, All right. yeah. I can't win with sound, man. He's like, <laughs> you sound like you're coming through two mics in a tunnel talking to the mic. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited. Apparently, the writer of Wonder Woman, Alan Heinberg, has signed a deal with ABC and Marvel Studios to create an all-female show for Marvel. Man. So the little back and forth between everybody's everybody... Everybody's like switching up. Like yeah. Everybody's stealing each other's like writers, producers, right. and, and shit. And I mean, you, what? Wonder Woman, hugely successful. Yeah. Kind of like started the charge for female-led projects. And, and let's you know, be honest about it. Started the charge for the DC Universe because everything yeah. else has not been good. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah, right. I mean, as long as everybody has jobs and everybody's working and being creative, like right. maybe the switching up is good for creativity. Exactly. And being able to do something different. And, you know, I, I think it can seem negative, like, oh, no one has loyalty and everyone's switching yeah. up. But maybe it's not always such a bad thing. Everyone's yeah. working. No, yeah. and look, it's, not, true. it's not about loyalty, though. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's more about, like, just being creative and trying to right. go with the right. project that right. you want to work with or yeah, the thing you want to the see. There's too much on that loyalty, like oh, you want to be loyal to this one brand, mm. but that's not how it ever was. See though, but Hollywood. I kind of feel like I mean I think you're right with on the Warner Brothers and DC side, they seem to be like whatever. But Marvel seems very protective of yeah. their Avengers family and their sure. Marvel family. I mean they they refer to themselves as that. They show up at events together randomly and yeah. they hang out together. They're like this big giant group of family well i mean we we talked about it before on the show what disney and marvel did for robert downey jr's dog right so i mean come on yeah i mean that's like the actor side the face side of it yeah on the back end there's always been kind of like changing up like josh weeding is isn't he doing 12 things with uh dc now or is he yeah, but that relationship kind of went sour well so i mean i you know i don't know better now I do like I do like though I you know who has a loyal relationship though and, and why I think that they uh, Chris Evans is gonna do a mm-hmm. series with Apple mm. and I feel like that's okay because yeah. you know for anybody who doesn't know Robert Iger sits on the board of Apple yeah. you know the head of Disney right. so I feel like he's like oh I trust you with my Avenger yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, okay so I, I feel like the look like we've talked so many times on this show we're getting down to three or four. And biggies, the, biggies, and yeah. that's it. So I feel like they're going to be very protective of their properties and very protective of eh, you can. Okay, you can use this guy. Yeah. But you can't. Yeah, and you know, kind of. I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see going forward. It really is. It really. But I also think because remember we talked about this on last week's show that Disney announced that they were going to be using the Avengers characters mm. from the movies on yeah. their own series. Yeah, I, I think the fact that they just announced that Chris Evans was doing a Apple series mm-hmm. probably eliminates Captain America from getting his own series on Disney. Yeah. So, I mean, if we see that, it's probably going to be either Bucky or Falcon that yeah. we're talking about getting a series there. So, yeah. who knows? I mean, we'll yeah. see. I could see Falcon. I can totally see Falcon. Yeah, yeah. to be honest. I, th- I think you should keep... I mean, I think the normal progression that everybody thinks is going to happen is Winter Soldier, Bucky, mm-hmm. going to yeah. become Cap. Yeah. He's going to pick up the shield. So I would say leave him in the movies and let yeah. Yeah, Falcon be in the, the, the exactly. series if that's what you're going to do. Exactly. I think that would be good. Exactly. Uh, Bruce Greenwood signs on for the Shining sequel, Doctor Sleep. Man, honestly, Stephen King has so many stories. He does. It's insane. They make a joke about it on Family Guy. They're like, he's they have him like sitting in, a, in his office, and like, oh, it's a haunted lamp. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm watching Castle Rock right now, and it has like it's involved with basically all of his stuff that he wrote. There's stuff about Shawshank. There's stuff about um. It there's stuff about The Shining. There's and the, one more, but I forget. Well, maybe I can help with that. We just got done watching Dark Tower. Yeah, mm, and we Dark wanted Tower, to pick yeah. up the books. Yeah, because I've heard so much better about the books. Do you know how much? How many books are in the Dark Tower series? Oh man, tell us. Ten? Tell us. It's like eighteen. Oh, oh my, my goodness! Gosh. I'm not really too sure, but I, wow. I've been like trying to research through and trying to get the library books and like which one's the first one. No, not that one. Yeah. No, that's the oh. eighth one. Yeah. That's the fifth one. That's, that's a lot of reviews. There's like there's a ton of them. And it's crazy. oh yeah, it's Stephen King. So each book is about yeah. exactly exactly. <laughs> oh, right. I'm sorry. On camera. Right. And, uh, but uh, Stand By Me, that was the other one because oh. they made reference to, yeah, when those boys found the body by the train tracks. I, I forgot guess. that he did that one too. Yes. There's, yes. there's a lot of Stand them that I forget me. that 
were his too. Yeah. Wait, and on the on the other side, of, he's been the subject of in so many other films. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I forget the name of it, and I hate that I forget the name. But there's a great film with Greg Kinnear and Lily Collins and uh, Nat Wolf, mm-hmm. and Nat Wolf is wanting to be a writer and fo- and he's like obsessed with Stephen with King. Stephen King. And he like writes this thing, and he soda, and his sister sends it off to Stephen King yeah. without him knowing because oh, she man. knows how good it is yeah. or whatever. And like Stephen King calls him, yeah, you know, and he's like, oh my god, Stephen King called me and thinks I could be a like, writer. Oh my kind of, but he's also like that on, yeah. on that end of it too. He's been, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's awesome. I mean, Hell yeah. And can we just talk a, a minute for about The Shining sequel? Because, mm. oh, damn. Did I tell you all I ever went, that I went to the Stanley Hotel? Yes. Yeah, I did right? tell you that. Yeah. Shit. How, how awesome was that? That like, was really good. Oh, yeah, I did tell you all that because the lady was a really good tour guide. I remember yeah. that now. Yeah. 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 Gaffer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it, it has nothing to do oh. with Gaffer. It has to do with where the hotel is located. Uh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Was there some ambient too? That's why, true. Could be why she doesn't remember. Yeah. Well, you know, but they, <laughs> even the tour guides talk about the haunting and stuff and how they say it. Like, it really, even though the movie's super duper creepy or whatever, it's not very, like, a, it's not a very malicious haunting. Like, yeah. everyone that went there back in the day, like in the Victorian era, all the way up to, like, the 20s, had a blast. Like, they went there to party their asses off. Yeah, it's off. supposed to be an uplifting, right. more That's of shit. a positive yeah. That's awesome. aura, not, yeah. not a negative connotation. It's just right. Stephen King went. Oh, I gotta make it. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. I gotta make this boo. Oh, yeah. And then there's a, apparently a, one of the original maids that lived there that um, she worked there until she like basically died in oh, like, wow. her 90s. But for one period, period of time, there was a gas leak in part of the estate, I guess you could say. And it, there was an explosion and she got hurt. And for like a year, the owners paid for her recovery and her medical bills. Oh, wow. And she ended up you know, recovering just fine and working, yeah. like I said, through the rest of her life. And apparently she's one of the main spirits that resides there that's cool. epic she goes around like, yeah uh, epic story yeah, and, and, and like if you're there. they say you know it's all supposedly or whatever but they say if you're a woman and you're having trouble picking out an outfit for the evening you can leave a couple out and like when you come back one will be out and the others will be put back up oh shit, shit. Um, and Dude. Single, we have got to go here it's oh, really cool oh, if you take a tour because i tell you all these stories yeah, if you're yeah. a single man it's, when this was built in the victorian area uh, single men weren't supposed to stay in the same place as married couples and single women. You had to sleep out on the lawn. Right. They oh, had like a tent wow. for you to sleep out wow. there. Damn. And so if you're well, a single sucks. guy and you go there, sometimes your stuff will be packed up and put out by the door. Right. Kind of like a, a hint. Uh, you don't belong well, in here, single I man. Mean, well, I mean, yeah. Ghost Hunters, they had a glass break in the room. Yeah. Oh, wow. The glasses break and shatter. Now, how much is that yeah. real? I don't know. Yeah. I'm all into that, though. Me and Lil' Cam, we used to like travel around and stay at all these little bed and breakfasts that we know were haunted. <laughs> you know, we would visit the Myrtles, which is supposedly the most haunted place in America. And like all the, I'm so into that. I got to go there now. And I you mean, can, for like four, three or four hundred dollars a night, you can stay in the ho- in the Stanley Hotel, too. And like, depending oh. on which room you go to, like yeah. maybe the one that Jim Carrey was in or even the one that um, Stephen King was in. Oh, my goodness. And I guess they cost more, but depending on that. But yeah. you can pay to actually stay the night in those rooms, oh or God, just a regular room. Epic. It's like, have to look at, expensive. Look into that. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, just the tour though is fun. Question, I'm thinking a crazy aunt road trip, trip. right? I'm, like shit. Yeah. <laughs> a crazy I'm aunt road that trip. much money. I might want to make sure it has a continental. Probably. I mean, it's yeah. a very nice hotel. Like, yeah. It's super yeah. fancy and stuff, so it's worth the money. But this will be a crazy aunt road trip that that latte has to go on though, because she's clearly going to be our tour guide. Exactly. She can do it herself. I'm leaving to the professionals because even though I've done it once, they that was seriously. They tell, but they tell you so much of the history. Like it's, like I said before, if you're a history buff or a paranormal buff, it's good because they tell you the history I'm of both, the Stanley so. Brothers <laughs> and why they built it and how they built and how one of them survived tuberculosis three times. Oh wow. my goodness! And they credit it to the air in Colorado, the high altitude in the yeah. air, and then they also wow. tell you about the ghosts. That is awesome. So. But I'm curious because for people who don't know, you and McGregor is playing a grown up Danny Torrance. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. So, yeah. And if you watch the recent Christopher Robin, he was kind of giving you a preview, I think. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought he was more Danny yeah. Torrance than Christopher Robin. That's my opinion. But I'm Damn. excited about it, you know, and they keep adding great people to this. Yeah. And I'm even more excited to see what Stephen King is going to think about it because while many consider The Shining to be one of the most iconic horror films of our generation, yeah. he hated it. Yeah. He fucking yeah. hated yeah, it. Exactly. Well, so. he thought Stanley Kubrick messed up his vision. Yeah, yeah but he's kind of, I, I heard he kind of backtracked a little bit on I, that. I think because so many people attacked him about yeah. what, what do you mean? Because so many it? people yeah. loved it. Well, and then he did his own TV series right. that was meant like to be, and they, they didn't even shoot any of it at the Stanley Hotel, too, which I think is what bothered him. It was all yeah. done in, in London or at this one. A hotel in Oregon. Oh wow! Yeah. And they talk about that on the tour too. But um, yeah, they um, he I think 
when he did his own TV series and it yeah, wasn't as popular. Changed, like, it did well, but it wasn't as popular as the movie. He was like, well, maybe the movie was better. Yeah. Maybe. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I mean, there's no yeah. doubt about it. We'll have to follow through with that and see. Kind of, It's definitely going to be on an Is It Worth It? Yeah. So, I mean, there's no doubt. Hell yeah. And, I mean, speaking of, and we'll just wrap this up real quick, but It too. Oh, oh can't yeah. Wait. That's yeah. going to be good. That, it, oh, that's the man. adult one, right? Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, I mean, geez, It was so good. I mean, was I was so a fan good. of the TV one with uh, yeah. Tim Curry. Oh, I was too. But, Jesus, man, that that yeah. film was epic. Yeah. I mean, it was so good. The Dude. beginning got me. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, shit. Yeah. was not expecting And Skarsgård was like, as Pennywise, was just yeah. scary as shit. Yeah, he I really mean, was. it was, yeah, good stuff. And it seems to be a trend because he's in uh, Castle Rock. He's like one oh. of the main characters. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, Robert Redford, old as shit, 82. He <laughs> backtracks <laughs> his retiring statements, and he's like, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> don't doubt me. He's like, psych. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what had happened was what? his accountant called him and said, we got to rethink this. Yeah, <laughs> like, hold on. There's not as much air as you think there is. Time like, out. I mean, time <laughs> out. I, I just really wonder, like, what would change your mind? I, I don't... You're 82. He's one of the most decorated and glorified actors... Of, ever ever yeah honestly well i mean butch cassidy and the sundance kid i think will always go down <laughs> as one of my favorites of robert redford i yeah. think it's just it was an epic film i think it's um, just um retirement sucks you think so i think if i you think don't have enough to do yeah, yeah i like, think it's like if you if he's acted in so many movies and he likes the craft so much when you step away you're like well this is boring well yeah I mean, i've already done like everything I don't know. I, I kind of feel like if you're a, an artist, if you're a creative, that's just who you are. Yeah. It's like part of your DNA. And I, I feel like if you stop, you feel like you're somehow, you know, not contributing to what your gift is or what's been given to right. you. And I mean, I, I liken it back to um, last week's guest, Ed Asner, mm -hmm. who very much, 89 and still going. And I love this quote near the end. He's like, as long as I'm on the right side of the grass, I'm yeah. going to keep acting. Yeah. I feel like that's how creatives and, and artists feel it's yeah. like i mean jesus look how many rock stars are well into their 70s still going Honestly. paul mccartney number one album yeah i feel like they just can't retire yeah i mean so i guess maybe they just have more flexibility with their schedule like they sure. can choose when to work more rather than right. feeling like they have to work all yeah the time. i don't know if that just just applies to artists there's a ton of people out there especially when they've been doing like a factory job right so it could be retail dude there's you people that, that won't beep, beep, beep. That was my mom. She's one of them. Yeah. My mom refuses to retire. She's yeah. like, I will die if I retire. I like working. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> mom, stop. Slow down. Uh, yes. Just, or, yeah, slow down. Just slow down. My dad has been retired for over 10 years, and he just rides around on his electric bike and does stuff around the house. I think see, as long as you have things to do. See, yeah. that's the you thing. Know? I mean, I, boy, maybe he should call my mom. That's <laughs> all I tell my, I tell my mom What, she worked the other day, like a 13-hour day? Yeah, oh yeah, a 13-hour yeah. day. Like, after going to the doctor the day before yeah. that for like a checkup, so she and then went to work after yeah. that and closed and then came back in and opened and had to work a 13 hour shift. Like, and she does, and that's the other thing, she can basically pick and choose where she wants to work, but she chooses like freaking crazy, like yeah. retail and like crazy yeah. stuff because she likes people. <laughs> okay, be a, be a candy striper at the hospital. Right. I mean, like, you know. Read the little lift, kids at the library. Yeah, you don't need to be lifting freight and climbing <laughs> ladders, goddammit. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Polly. You got your own segment on it. Right? Inside yeah. the crazy ant farm. I love my mama. All kidding aside, is I it, love my mama. Is it Miss Paula? It is. That's my foster mother, and she won't stop working either. She my mom is your foster mom? Friends. What the fuck, Chris? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what are they even How am I not know this? <laughs> We're foster brothers? <laughs> so anyway, Matt Daredevil Murdoch season three. Pissed. Huh? Matt Murdock is pissed. Yes. Did you see the the little teaser? I saw a little bit of that. Oh man, yeah. he's he's back to wearing all black. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. crazy. He looks pretty uh, dark and but you said this is going to be a good storyline. Oh yeah. I mean, they, uh, for anybody who's not familiar with the comics and is just kind of fan of the show, um this so I'm going to be careful here. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> ruin it for people. Spoilers. But I will say that this that storyline coming me. up and they've clearly set this storyline up. So I know what's coming. It's epic. And if you're a fan of Vincent D'Onfrio as uh, Kingpin, and uh, you are in for a world of loving coming up in this season. A world of love. Uh, world yeah, I mean, of seriously, if you thought he's been good before in, in, in season one and the brief appearances in season two, this storyline, and I'm 
fairly, I'm about 99.999% sure it's the storyline that's coming for season three. He's going to be freaking epic. Mm-hmm, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And my favorite is that little trailer so far. And he, like you said, he's all, and it's really dark. And he puts this slight little evil grin on his face. And I'm talking about Matt Murdock now. And, and, he, and he's like, let the devil out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, shit, yeah, let like, the devil out. Like, yeah. You know, Matt's going dark. Yeah. And, uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be epic. Yeah. And, I mean, if we're going to bring up, like, creepy trailers, and, I mean, the same with the creepy smile, the Joker one just right. came yeah. out, too. Yeah, let's talk about that for a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I could because, and the reason I want to talk about that a little bit is because I just saw this morning that they announced that, hey, don't worry, the Jared Leto Joker and Margot Robbie's um, uh, Harley Quinn movie is still going forward. I'm like, what? What Why is happening give us right now? Two different Jokers uh, at the same time. Like, that doesn't make sense to no. me. No. So I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. But back to. I didn't know how I felt about the Joaquin I didn't like Phoenix the makeup. Joker. I didn't like the makeup yeah. because I, I feel like, and if you look really good, and it's hard because the light keeps flashing, uh, like makeup, no makeup, makeup, no makeup. But if you look really good, you can see that he does have the green hair. Yeah, I so, saw that. But my thing is, is with the makeup, I, I can't tell, is this just like, because the storyline that they're going with, for anybody who doesn't know, is when he's like kind of a down and trotten, deadbeat comedian who's not having a lot of success, and he, and he has family issues and everything, and this is what kind of makes him go insane and kind of go crazy and want to be a criminal because he can't make it kind of a thing. And so my thing is, is like this teaser, is that makeup part of the, the, the comedian shtick? Because like, right. it's painted on makeup. Yeah, and, you know, like much like Heath Ledger's Joker was. I, anybody who's familiar with The Dark Knight knows that that version of the Joker, it wasn't a chemical reaction yeah. or kind of thing. It was just makeup. Yeah, and so this clearly implies that this is just makeup. Yeah, but my so my question is, is that just kind of for the comedian thing? And then he does eventually get the transformation mm-hmm. with the acid or whatever causes the skin to go permanently right. pale white with this or are they going to follow along the dark knight route and just keep it where he wears makeup yeah so cuz i would be disappointed as much as i loved heath ledger's yeah. version and that type i would be disappointed if it was again we're doing that yeah. i want to see he gets transformed yeah. into cuz i think that emphasizes his insanity yeah. the fact that jesus i look like this yeah. now kind of a, I, honestly i, mean, I, I just really wanted to see flashpoint yeah, no. I, yeah, I just want to see all, Martha. That's all I wanted. Up. That's all I yeah. wanted. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a, I look though. I'm a huge oh fan gosh. of Joaquin, and yeah. I think he's going to be a brilliant oh, yeah. Joker. Yeah, I just at this point questioning which Joker we're going to see. Yeah, how is it going to be? So yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I could I could see. I'm I'm, I'm right there agreeing with you. That's it, I mean I just yeah. I, I'm excited, but yeah. I'm I'm also nervous. Yeah, so. we shall see. We shall see. I it. do like his attitude. Though. I think if it is painted on makeup, I think it looks better for the um, Heath Ledger one. If you're going to go that route, that mm-hmm. one's more disturbing looking, mm-hmm. in my opinion. If you're going to do the whole, I just make myself up to look like this thing. Right, right. and I kind of like Heath Ledger was like someone who had. PTSD. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And it kind of like right. showed like a torn and it understands his violence and how he was trained. Uh, a comedian, I mean, I'm a failed comedian half the time. I, like, I've <laughs> right. gone on stage and failed, but I didn't want to go out and kill everybody. And right. Go psycho. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and oh, well, I mean, fair. I, I mean, I just, I don't, I, I guess we can wrap it up with, I like his attitude though, because we've been talking a lot about. Heath Ledger, yeah, and then everybody knows. Also, I'm sure if Ace was here, he'd have been Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson, because yeah. that's his you favorite kind of like. But they, so many people have played such iconic Jokers. Yeah, even looking at Mark Hamill as oh, the yeah. animated Joker, yeah, just honestly. about um, to say, just about <laughs> kind of a thing. And when asked about that, he's like, yeah, I really don't give a shit <laughs> yeah. if people like my version or yeah. not. I mean, I'm just going to do my version exactly. of it, and I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to live up to any. It's just, this is my Joker. If you like it, great. And if you don't, if oh, you well. Don't, oh well. And so I'm like, I guess when so many people have played such iconic versions of an iconic character, that's the attitude you have yeah. to take. Because yeah. if you try to like live up to those versions, you're going to kind of be screwed. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, <laughs> well done, we, uh, Joaquin. I mean, like, <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, next on the list, live action Avatar series ordered at Netflix. I'm pretty excited about this one to see what they do with it, honestly, because I was a fan of the animated show growing up when it was on um, a Nickelodeon. Didn't I think. they already do one? 
I want to say it was they did a movie. Yeah, yeah, they didn't do a, a series. A yeah, series. it was M Night Shyamalan. And, yeah, uh, I didn't see the movie. So, I didn't either. And I heard it wasn't good. So, I heard well, it's not worth it. Well, it wasn't. It was I heard M. it Night wasn't Shyamalan, worth it. right? Hmm? It was M Night Shyamalan. It was M. Night yeah, Shyamalan. and it was like during his not so good phase. Mm. And this is also <laughs> that's a shame. This is the starting of the whitewashing stuff. Right. Most of the characters on there, except for the evil characters, were all yeah. ethic. Um, and all the good characters were white. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I did notice so. that. Yeah. And especially that's an anime. I mean, it's not a Japanese anime. It was American. But yeah, but I, <laughs> I, I'm. I don't know. Like I watched the Death Note live yeah. action that Netflix did. And I thought it was an all right movie, mm-hmm. but I, I mean, I don't know that much about the anime, but I don't think it can compare to the anime itself. Like, yeah, I, yeah it, I guess it ruined a lot of stuff. For I'm one of those rare people who actually liked Death Note. Yeah. Maybe it's because I, I, I had an affinity towards the cast. Mm-hmm. I mean, Willem Dafoe. It's Willem yeah. Dafoe, Come and that's like, you want him to be yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so, he was awesome, but I think it was more, it just... Well, I mean, I mean taking a TV series and making a movie out of it is still kind of hard to do. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah true. it's true. It's true. We'll sure. see. We we'll shall see. see. Yeah. Netflix is. You got to give them credit though. They're all over the place. They are I mean, all over the place. They're attempting to do all different kinds of genres and all different kinds of things. Exactly. So. They're getting prepared for they are. to lose all that <laughs> when, content. When Disney takes everything away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, Bond twenty five. You know how we talked about on a previous show. They lost their other director due to creative differences because you know that happens in this industry. Mm-hmm. They now signed on a new American director, Carrie. I don't even know how to say uh, that. Fukunaga. Line. Fukunaga. Fukunaga. Uh, he's set to co-direct with Daniel Craig. This is the first American director to direct any of the Bond films. He, and an interesting thing, he's only directed like four feature films. Right. So, but he's using Daniel Craig as a director yeah. too. Yeah. So that, that's going to be kind of interesting because yeah. Craig's already he kind of molded some of his character mm-hmm. all around there. The the harsher, darker, grittier James Bond. But it yeah. also didn't like. Uh, it's still going to be interesting because this is it. I mean, the the reason yeah, that isn't this the last creative one? differences were that Daniel Craig, if I'm not mistaken, wants to kill off Bond and go yeah, out in the, some sort of epic fashion yeah. as the character, and like the other director was like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so and I mean, so I mean, maybe this guy agreed to kill him. Mm. I don't know. So and then I did see there's another rumor that maybe Henry Cavill. Mm. is the next potential oh, that shit. people are like, oh, shit, well, if he's not going to be Superman, let's give him James Bond. Yeah. So, I mean, I, me personally, I think he'd be a badass James yeah. Bond. I, I'm a big Cavill fan. Damn. So I don't know. I, I think they could maybe do both. Like I, like you were saying in another episode, talking about how James Bond can be any anybody. You know, right. That's the whole thing is that it doesn't have to be. So maybe the end of the Daniel Craig James Bond, and he can still have his completed arc and right. go out and then a rebirth with a new Bond. Damn. Right. And then even <sighs> simultaneous. Like, we could have Cavill and Idris Elba. Yeah. yeah. Like, why exactly. not have both? Like you like you said, like I think. Like the we, Joker? What right. the hell? I mean, give us multiple James Bonds. And, exactly. I mean, uh, I like that idea. Exactly. I, and even the creator himself, Ian Fleming, said there was no set version yeah. of who James Bond was yeah it's right. always that kind of a mysterious arc of anybody could be james bond yeah so I think, and yeah, honestly I we idea. get one like once every what three years yeah. I, two, yeah. to three yeah. years. Yeah. two two to three, three years. years so it's well, the only i feel thing like keeping mgm in business <laughs> oh, oh damn bro oh, shots fired they're gonna be swallowed up i mean they're on the chopping block every yeah. time and it's all coming down to the because the james bond library alone Mm-hmm. Is worth hundreds of millions yeah, of dollars. Exactly. So, like, I literally, I mean, all joking aside, it really is MGM's. Like, yeah. I mean, that's them. Their shit. So, uh, but to your point, though, with the only four features, I mean, that sounds scary. You're handing over a franchise yeah. that's been around for sixty years. Exactly. Uh, I mean, what? When was the first? I don't even know. But it I don't was way back either. or late fifties, early sixties. I first was not James a Bond movie. So, and I would be like, eh, but then. Ryan Coogler got Black Panther, sure. and all he had under his belt was Fruitvale Station and uh, you know Creed. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if I guess if you if you got it, you got it. Yeah. We'll have to see if this guy can carry a yeah. sixty year you know sixty year old franchise. Yeah, but Dustin, nineteen sixty two, sixty two. So there you go. So will I mean, can he carry it? That's yeah. a lot of decades of pressure. But Coogler was like. Got this it's shit. Fine. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't think you can say it like that. Like, it's 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 this long of pressure. How many times has Bond dipped? I mm, there's a lot mm. of dips in the James Bond. You 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 have the the 
model over there with uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Yeah. You have a Roger Moore where it's dipping down in the Moonraker. You have uh, Pierce Bros. Um, Timothy. Well, Timothy Dalton only did three. Uh, Pierce Brosnan doing uh, Die Another Day. That had a big dip down in it. And like Quantum of Solace even had a dip in the Daniel Craig era because it came back up. So there's always dips in the series. It's, yeah, it but hasn't do you been want the your greatest first, bunch of Do you movies. want your first attempt out to be a dip? Right. But I'm like <laughs> saying like <laughs> if, if Daniel Craig's doing it along with, they're both co-directing. I think he's going to be directing the scenes like where Daniel Craig's in front of the camera, and he's going to be directing. Well, like, I, I where think it's Daniel going. Craig's producing. I don't think I don't know. It's if he's co-directing. co-directing. That's oh. what it says. Co-directing oh, well, then, with Daniel Craig. There so you go. And boom. You have someone who's already strong in the franchise. I don't know Fair how enough. Daniel Craig yeah. necessarily directs, but yeah. he has someone who knows how to shoot it. Yeah, we shall well, see. We'll, yeah, we'll see. Creed, I, mean, I mean, Creed looks like a great movie. It shot yeah. really well. Yeah. So. Honestly. I'm a fan. I mean, I've always been a James Bond fan. Clearly, not as big as Chris because I can. Yeah, he all, had all like. The movies oh, I should keep my email them. address. That's like James underscore Bond. Yeah, oh and shit. So, uh, and I mean, from 1999. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> For me, while I am a gaffer, it's not Sean Connery. My 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 James Bond was Roger Moore. I'm yeah. a big Roger Moore. You know, James Bond kind of yeah. guy. Well, so. I'm a Pierce Brosnan, but Moore has always been in right. my heart because of he has some of the best movies and some of the best culture. Is anybody bits in out there. there a George Lazenby? Like, because <laughs> guy did one and it was a dip. Nah. <laughs> was, <laughs> I, I mentioned it. I said the Swiss model. Yeah, yeah. It was just, <laughs> <laughs> but oh he, goodness. I mean, he he went for it. He's like, I'm a model. I haven't gone into acting before. Yeah, I'm gonna well try it out. But you know what? To his credit, even though he only did one, he's never not in the conversation just like right now we brought him up exactly he will forever be known as the guy who did one james, james bond, bond movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious you know. well switching it up a little bit we're gonna get into some music spotify is now allowing indie artists to upload their music and pay release dates huh Oh, it's yeah. okay to it's be okay gay. To be gay. <laughs> Get no, that's not indie. That's that's a very short cover. No, it's that's a, a very. It's short. a micro cover. It's a, it's a good. <laughs> a well, what, what was she? A uh, vanilla latte. Uh, uh, vanilla latte. Yeah. Vanilla, yeah. Pudding. vanilla pudding. Yeah. 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 Your, your debut, but your debut album on Spotify's new indie label, label will be vanilla pudding. I'm gonna it's start gonna working be, on your album cover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be fantastic. Don't you know? I don't think about the things I say. I just say things, <laughs> and then y'all. Remind me of what I said. <laughs> she's like, I have forgotten oh, already. Oh my think gosh. About it. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that last week's show will probably be our most listened to episode. Uh, yeah. Uh, one, because of Ed Asner, and two, because of Tavian. Yeah. You had Honestly. some just epic one liners uh, that were just, we were dying the whole time we were listening to it. <laughs> it so, we were having a hard time live tweeting because I couldn't yeah, stop laughing. laughing. I'm like, oh my God, that was so epic. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it's so funny. <laughs> But yeah, this is awesome because now they're becoming more like SoundCloud, but on a bigger level because Spotify has obviously taken over. They're one of the big boys in the music streaming game. So this is awesome that they're going to allow indie artists to upload their songs. But there's still a five-day review period. Now, I don't know if that's five days prior to your release date or five days past your release date, but... It's still pretty awesome. You I want to say if it follows along the same um, procedures as the podcast stuff, it's before, yeah, prior to, they yeah, kind of like because um, I know when we were uh, attempting to do our show on Spotify or whatever, yeah, um, the, yeah, the it's an extensive review process. Yeah. They basically really do listen to every show, yeah, kind of determine if it is something they want or not yeah. want on there, and so well, I, I think would, it's I more of like that. trying to make sure. No, no one's uploading copyrighted content. Yeah, they don't own. or or in this day and age, unfortunately, hate speech or yeah. violent. You exactly. Know, kind of. So That's what I mean, I'm it saying. makes sense. So, but I don't, um, I don't, I don't know. This is like them trying to catch up to something. Like Spotify's been taking a lot of hits recently. No, They're yeah, not doing so well in the market because like Apple is starting to really starting to uh, take foothold and Google yeah. and others. And this is like okay, we're going to take the idea that Bandcamp's been doing since the launch of Bandcamp. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, um, you said SoundCloud and there's, uh, what's, there's another one out there. I just can't think of the name of it at the moment that they all had in the artists already putting right. tons of music well, out yeah. there. I think that we, and we've talked about this a little bit in the past, but I mean, Spotify, Reverb, that's what it is, Reverb Nation, sorry. There you go. How you, how you survive is to diversify, yeah. to change. And we've already talked about how the fact that they're leaning into television yeah, exactly. programming now and non-music, and this is just another step in that 
change in direction, if exactly. you will. You know, like I, I, I think it's a, it's a good move. Whether it works or not, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like they, you're right, Chris. They're at a point where they're taking feel a lot Spotify of hits. Spotify is going to be the next Rhapsody. Oh, mm. I'm sorry. Whoa. <laughs> on the record, damn. You know, I mean, just a bam. bam. <laughs> we'll see. We'll it see. Could, see. That could be my bias, but. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel you. I feel you. There are no Walmart, are they? There's no Walmart. <laughs> 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 Hashtag Team Walmart <laughs> for Soundman. Right. All right, next one. Kiss announces their farewell tour. The original members, they started back in 1973. It's crazy. They're still around doing oh, this. All of them are still alive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them are Watch still alive, now. I no, believe. No, I didn't mean it because of the age. I meant it because I, they're I rock know, stars. I know. Yeah, I believe- show of hands for the video for anybody watching this who was alive when they got started. Oh, good talk, good talk. Ah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, was the only one, yeah. But I was three, so yeah. it's not that. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But like, how but, long will this farewell tour be? Well, off camera, the other day, we were talking about it, and we were like, if they're not going to go on... You remember that like little hiccup tour they had where they decided not to wear the makeup and like nobody went Yeah, they put out a new album. Yeah, but that was like the was like, 80s, wasn't yeah, it? Like, yeah, nobody wants to see Kiss with that. If this farewell no, tour it, isn't it's the for epic, the show. you know, knights in Satan service, exactly. all full-out makeup and fire in it, like, yeah. like then don't do it. Yeah. I mean, I think people want to see Kiss. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, they want to see Gene yeah. Simmons' yeah, well, tongue. Yeah, we were talking about it the other day if if you're going to see <laughs> tavia a, doesn't no but no. well that's the no. thing oh i, I would see, still want to no, see him oh yeah just no. to mark it off a check mark exactly. in the bucket list well like no i think kicks. i think tavia's d- denial there is much like what we were talking about but if you're going to see music if you're going to see a great rock band no you're not picking i mean they're kiss. not great musicians no. they're not the best vocalists out there but show. I mean, that's what I mean. They Dude, wanna, you like, want to see the Kiss show. It's a performance. You, yeah, it's a yeah. performance. You're not going exactly. to see the band. No. Let's be yeah. honest about look, look, it. I mean, you don't go to a wrestling match to see, um, uh, I should say, a sports event. You're going there to see a show, a freaking show. great show. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, and yeah. I feel like that's it's entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kiss is the WWE of like rock <laughs> bands. Yeah, they really like, are. Yeah. <laughs> it's completely fucking fake, but it's a great show. Yeah. <laughs> um. Gene but, Simmons is calling right now. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. He's, call, he's calling uh, Jason Williams because right, remember yeah, he right. parked his car. <laughs> <laughs> Great callback. I was thinking about it. Yeah. Although, to be fair, he was a much better like actor. The Family Jewels was fucking hilarious. Yeah, it I was funny. Family Jewels, so. I like and his daughter too. can sing her ass off. She yeah. is a real Sophie. She's oh, a shit. great vocalist. So That's awesome. That's Maybe awesome. she'll carry on. Hell yeah. But, but like, like I was saying, like other artists, like Ozzy's been saying farewell how long. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. Cher is coming back, and she's been doing yeah, farewell she's about tours to do a whole since the like, 90s. <laughs> Here we go yeah, again. I think that's what she's calling it, yeah. right? Here we go again. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, we I shall mean, see. <laughs> I understand like, when the artists, when the bands fall, like ACDC was doing a farewell right. tour because dude was going into the men's ship. Right yeah, badly. exactly. And several others. Like, I just heard that this is Primus's last tour. They're yeah. about to oh, wow. be down the street playing. Oh, wow. And I... I'm not going to get this. And damn. Aww. Okay. All right. Well, let's stick right. with yeah. music. This, yeah. The Beatles, the Let It Be film is to be remastered and re-released in 2020 on the 50th anniversary. Wow. Now, I personally yeah. have not seen this film, but have you? I have. You have you? I have. Have Not when it was originally. Ah, (laughs) Let's just clarify that. Raise your hand who was. Not this time. No, no. I got the 73. I didn't get, you know, I'm not that old. um, I have seen the film and uh, I'm a fan. I actually like all the old Beatles films. Yeah, I I saw uh, Hard Day's Night. Yeah, Hard Day's Night. I I thought they were fantastic. Um, So I'm excited for this one. It'll be interesting to see, you know. It's awesome that they're still relevant, even with Paul McCartney's solo album. Like they're still yeah. around, I, yeah, you know. I mean, that's a great point. I, I think that they're one of the rare bands whose music just transcends it's timeless. Time. I mean, okay, uh, for anybody who's ever listened to the show in the past, or even just follows me and Emily, you guys know we're huge Pretty Reckless fans. And if you know Taylor Momsen and the Pretty Reckless, they are anything not even close to resembling Beatles. But her full inspiration is the Beatles yeah. and John Lennon and that their music. Yeah. And so I just think it's one of those things that no matter what genre you're coming at or exactly. no way, it just transcends and everybody likes it. And exactly. That, to their credit, I mean, 50, 60 years later, they're still... Exactly. Paul just <laughs> the number Release, one album. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. It's That's just, what I'm saying. Um, 
because I felt like some of his songs on there could uh, you could listen to it whenever. whenever. Timeless. Yeah. But we're going to get into that and That's right. Is it worth it? And so <laughs> go right. check that out. Uh but stick in like we said more with music. The Heartbreakers. Mm. Mike mm. Campbell, the one of the guitarists says the band mm. will go back on tour at some point obviously without Tom Petty. Mm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Just I don't know how I feel about it though. Do you really want someone else singing for the Heartbreakers that's not Tom Petty? I'm it, I, okay. <laughs> and then we go dead <laughs> silent. No, no, I had an Ed Asner moment there. Like, um, no, what what I was gonna say is, I, I mean, I don't. If it was for like a special reunion tour, yeah. kind of like Joan Jett filled in mm-hmm. if for Nirvana, yeah, well, and the, that was entertaining, but it was known. I, this is just a step in for this particular anniversary or for this tour. Right. She didn't like. I'm the new singer of Nirvana. Right. Okay. Exactly. Dustin, and would you go see Leonard Skinner? No. Oh, okay. No. And I'll <laughs> no. tell you, I'm one of those people. Like Fleetwood Mac is getting ready to go. I desperately want to see Fleetwood Mac, but I'm not seeing them without the five. Yeah. And Lindsey Buckingham's not going to be there. Well, I'm not like, going. It took it's you so Fleetwood long Mac. to see Guns N' Roses. Guns right? Guns N' Roses. I waited until they were all back. Van Halen. I waited until they were all back. <laughs> Sticks. I will not go see Sticks. Sticks is not Sticks without Dennis DeYoung. Yeah. Journey is not Journey without uh, Steve Perry. I'm yeah. sorry. And I've seen it one time, maybe be successful, and I'll and I'll give them credit for that. Queen, yeah. mm-hmm. and they went with Adam Lambert, who young flam. I think it works because he's like Freddie Mercury. He was very young, very flamboyant, yeah. very in your face, exactly. And and he's he's I guess a reincarnation of, if you will, if you could even possibly do that, right? Um, and that I mean, no discredit to Freddie Mercury there because well, I'm not saying that's Adam honestly Lambert a good is. comparison. He, he yeah, is. Yeah, he would. I think he would have been pleased with, yeah. with uh, that. Agreed. You know? But that's rare. I feel like you can't just throw people into iconic right. bands. Like exactly. you said, nobody well, wants to see the Heartbreakers without Tom exactly. Petty. Well, like, oh, like I kind of have the opposite. I, I still want to see the rest of the band, and it's still something to see them. Those are the also creative people that were in the band too. It's true. I would love to see the Misfits. Even if it's just a Jerry only experience where yeah. it's just him and the drummer from Black Flag, and that yeah. that's still awesome. I get to see the Misfits and still write down I saw the Misfits. Yeah. No, I didn't get to see everybody in there. Or Danzig may not be the same. Right. That, that's still give or take. Like I would have saw the Misfits with Michael Graves. I did run sound for Michael Graves. Yeah, it was amazing to see, and that's still something I write down and put in my book. And Hell yeah. several other that's artists, cool. oh, I would still want to see. I'm yeah. sure. Just them. I'm I would sure even there like are many to go people... see like some bands that are just a tribute bands that are trying right. to do something for them. Right. Like yeah. they had the Beatles tribute band mm-hmm. down here. Yeah, no hey, they got one that's coming that. up. It's called Shania Twin. You can Shania see that. Twin. <laughs> they got another well, one coming up called. No, Purple. Thank God, that's not my music style. <laughs> no, but they've got another yeah. one coming up called Purple Rain. Like yeah. a, oh. a rain R E. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm a, like I hear it's really good. Oh, yeah. I would go see it. Just it's it's very creative. Well, that's still kind of tribute bands are one thing though. The actual band with a new guy, I'm just not into. I just, I, I'm it for me, it doesn't. But I mean, there I are people like, like you, I'm sure, which is why they're gonna go on tour exactly. because there are people like that you will that still would go see them. see them. I mean, so, I would still go out and see Journey. I know what's mm, his name's not the singer. Look, yeah. I let the new guy's okay, but he, he's I know not he's, not, Perry. he's not, he's not gonna compare to Steve Perry, <laughs> yeah. no, but that's, I a, that's still, a hard. That's a hard voice to follow, though. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's tough. all the same. Dennis DeYoung. Like, yeah. I mean, I just, I, they're yeah. so iconic. Yeah. Could you even imagine Fleetwood Mac touring without Stevie Nicks? Yeah. Stevie Nicks' rough. voice is Fleetwood Mac. Not not taking anything away from Christine McVie. No. I mean, because I know she does some solo yeah. lead songs, but she is the voice yeah. of Fleetwood Mac. Exactly. And I feel like she's not at her best without Lindsay. Yeah. And Lindsay's not going to be there. I agree. So without that, Tension yeah. without that relate, I just feel like I'm not seeing Fleetwood Mac. I feel you. Just, I mean, that's I my my opinion on yeah. it. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna end our industry news on a total douchebag. On a total <laughs> douchebag. Wow, yeah. so that's okay. Yeah, let's bring it up. Sticking with the music. Uh, uh, Suge Knight pleads Suge Knight. no contest to manslaughter charges. Uh, back in the day, not really back in the day, when they were filming Straight Out of Compton, uh, they he came up to the set and ran over this guy because there was a confrontation because he didn't like the way he was being portrayed in the film even though that's basically what was happening so yeah he basically ran over this guy and killed him and gets 28 years 
Wow. <laughs> because that's what you do. Yeah. Listen, I don't like the way I'm being represented in the film, so I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, not going to call my lawyer or anything like that. I'm going to kill See, the irony of that, because the way he was being represented in the film is that he was a thug. Exactly. And a gangster and beat the shit out of people. Exactly. Like, so. And so his answer to, you're not portraying me right, Just proves but I'm going to kill you. Exactly. <laughs> like, dude, so he he like, killed the, the actor? That was no, 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 no. He killed just... Somebody that was on set who was actually involved in all those situations back in the day. He right. was just like right. a hang around guy that knew like Dr. Dre and Shug uh, Knight. And like everything. an advisor to Yeah, him. and he was honestly the peacemaker. He was trying to solve the situation, but then he wrong place, wrong right. time. Damn. So, yeah. It's a really messed up situation. I never heard about that. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah it it wow. happened like because Straight Outta Compton came out, what, two, three yeah, years ago? Yeah, yeah. because yeah, it was literally while it was filming. So, I like, just, five wow. max yeah. top years ago. Wow. And so, I'm going to try to transition this. So, because we got our guest segment coming up and it's all about movies and happy stuff. Happy. Oh, so, I'm going to try to transition. <laughs> Does anybody else like me want to see a sequel to Straight Outta Compton? When Honestly. When we go into the death row and, uh, like, Aftermath, you know, yeah. Yeah, and, and, like, you know, Snoop Dogg and yeah. all that. I, I, I mean, I thought Straight Outta Compton was so good. Yeah. I think we should follow Dre's story and keep going and Honestly. i mean i i, I come on dre i seen it i it's I really get, good i get caught up in tv shows i know there's a lot of good movies and stuff i know i need to watch more of them honestly and one of my coming up classes i hope that i have to watch some of these films because there you go. but it's straight just like out of i mean study. paul giamatti and just the entire cast who played you know nwa they were just phenomenal they and were. I, I love the guy who played dre mm-hmm. um and i just i want to see the continuation of the story yeah. I, I just i think it would be and I think it would do well. Everybody yeah. loved Straight Outta Compton. Yeah, I think honestly. it would do real. So if Dre, if you're listening, go back. Let's let's make go another back. one, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Now it's time for our special guest this week, the one and only Miss Lily Borden. You might have seen her in things like The Martian, The Book Club, or just Book Club, and most recently The Nun, which we just recently saw. You can go check that out. And is it worth it? She's been acting since the early 2000s, so it's going to be really exciting to finally get to talk to her about her career, man. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to hear what she had to say. Yeah. And like J-Lo said, be sure we we did Book Club, too. Mm-hmm. You can catch our thoughts on Book Club and The Nun yeah. on Is It Worth It? Yeah. So, yeah, it's about time. Let's uh, give her a ring here and see if we can't get her on the phone. There yeah. we go. Hello? Uh, hi, is this Lily? Yes, is this Dustin? It is. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm just um, plugging in my headset. All righty. <laughs> Hey. Hey. <laughs> Can you Thanks hear us for okay? Me today. Oh, yeah, no problem. Of Thank course. you. Welcome inside the Crazy Ant Farm, and uh, we're thrilled to have you today. Yes. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, no of problem. Course, of course. So, uh, so, how you doing today? Really good. Really fantastic. It's a beautiful day in Los Angeles. It's a sunny fall autumn day okay well there you we're, go. We're, <laughs> I'm jealous we're already jealous because we're like dripping in humidity and it's yeah. like over a hundred here so yeah we're already jealous <laughs> <laughs> are you guys in are you guys in Mississippi uh, Mississippi yeah about an hour outside of New Orleans so we're kind of around yeah. the New Orleans region so but yeah, yeah and it, super, it, it super quite there yeah hasn't quite found autumn yet here <laughs> yeah to be oh. honest yeah who's all there there's you dustin oh uh, well it's me else? it's me and logan right now uh <laughs> everybody ah, else is kind of yeah. hello <laughs> uh we might have emily join us she should she should be on her way cool fantastic right. okay thank you <laughs> yeah no of problem course, of course so of course, of course. <laughs> so uh yeah well i guess my first question for you is i, I noticed that that your mom uh was was a film star as well in uh hungary and so did you kind of like were you around the industry when you were a child and kind of growing up and is it something you always wanted to do or how did you kind of get first realize you wanted to be get into the industry as an actress well that's correct my mom uh, is a very famous actress in, in Hungary, which mm-hmm. is not a big country. It's about a country of 10 million people. Oh, wow. Um, and she she came up when she was super young. She had just started drama school. There's one national theater school. And she got pulled from school to do all these movies. She was known to be the most beautiful actress of her age in the oh, wow. 70s. And in the 80s, she she moved to the United States and uh, married my dad and had me and then had my brother. And she was away from the business. I mean, she worked. Uh, she did some theater and she did some television in New York. 
but mostly she was a full-time mom. And so uh, when we'd go back to Hungary, I would get a sense of who she really was, like just from people stopping in the street and, you know, uh, telling her that they've always admired her and asking her if she was ever going to move back to Hungary, which she ended up doing about 20 years later. Hmm. But she, yeah, but she, um, but she never talked about, you know, what a huge star she was in her country and but I would get a sense of it when we would go home. Right. And when we'd go back to Hungary for the summer, I would be mostly with my grandparents or my cousins. But sometimes I would hang out with her and I'd go to meetings with her. And, and then she'd go home and, you know, fly away for a few weeks at a time and shoot movies. So I would know, you know, that she was working on a movie. So I was around it and she always supported that within me. And she always told me she thought I would be an actress one day. Mm-hmm. And I definitely had that... Uh, inclination i was in all the plays every chance i could get i was on stage <laughs> yeah there you go and, and that's, that's how it awesome. kind of started for you right you kind of started on stage and more theater than film and television right well just from my training in school but i i think i i kind of did them in tandem my first film was a short film i did it was a columbia graduate student film and my mom my actual mom played my mom and oh, awesome. um i yeah. played Lisa Roberts as a young uh, child. And so I started, I, I would say I started in film if, if I'm to look at it that way. And then as I grew older um, in school, we'd do, you know, the school plays. And I was Annie and Annie. I was Wendy and Peter Pan. And um, and then and then the theater came in more during college. Uh, and then also as I moved to Budapest, I started doing theater. Mm-hmm. And then all the films from out of the country would start pouring into the new studios being built in Budapest because I lived in Budapest for about four years before moving to LA in 2008. So from 2004 to 2008 or 2003 to 2008, I was um, doing stage and uh, film pretty much at the same time. Wow. That's awesome. And and, and, yeah, so you've quite the traveler as well. I mean, and that that's, it's got to be just like this, like wild culture shock, though, right? From I guess kind of doing theater and stage and film over in in, in Europe and and overseas, and then kind of coming to LA. That's got to be a bit of a, yeah. a switch, right? Um, it was, but it wasn't. I mean, a film set is a film set, right? And I actually worked on pretty big productions in Hungary. It's like uh, the new Hollywood of Europe is Budapest. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay. Colette, yeah. Colette film there, the movie that, you know, Keira Knightley's probably going to be up for os- an Oscar for. And right. So, I mean, so many movies I filmed. I filmed uh, uh, with uh, Ridley Scott there. I filmed with so many amazing, famous actors. And one of my first films was The Moon and the Stars with Alfred Molina mm. and Jonathan Price. Right. So I, I, I started my career working with some pretty big people. And so I got spoiled and then I moved to LA and it took a while to ramp it up. And luckily now I'm starting to work with, you know, I've always worked on amazing projects, mm-hmm. but like, you know, it's some people say it's the size of the movie, not the size of the role. Well, I don't, I don't, te- I tend to agree on some level, but uh, my favorite movie was Cherry, which is now only available on DVD, but right. it was my first feature and I was the lead in that. And that was, you know, there were no so-called big names, you know, distributors talk about big names. You need to have a big name in your film. There were no big names in, in a lot of the films that I did. Um, but, but now I'm starting to work on films with bigger names, but also, um, making sure that I'm fulfilled and playing bigger roles in, in sort of indie features as well. Uh, my film Curtis just came out. It won the grand prize. Uh, at the Montreal World Film Festival. I helped produce that as well. I have oh, wow. a supporting role in that. Um, that's doing the festival circuit right now. Uh, Book Club came out, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. obviously, in May, and then now it's on DVD. And then uh, The Nun came out uh, right. recently, um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. It's number one. Yep. So so it's been a nice few years, and I'm, I'm really glad I made the move. But yeah, Hungary is always going to be, as you said, where I started my career. Yeah, right. And and uh, now for 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 anybody that might not know, uh, Curtis, that's the, the about the uh, Casablanca, correct? And the director of Casablanca. Yes, Michael Curtis. His name uh, was Americanized, but it's actually Kertész Mihai, and oh. he was a Hungarian vaudeville actor that moved to the state, first New York, and then Los Angeles, and became one of the most prolific. Uh, directors ever during the golden era of Hollywood. He worked right. uh, a lot with Warner Brothers and he worked with Halby Wallace 
my character in this movie is Irene Lee. She's an actual uh, human, and she <laughs> she was the story story editor on the movie Casablanca. She found the play Everybody Comes to Rick's that the movie is based on. Oh wow, wow, that's, that's fantastic! Well, congratulations on that, and and for winning the award. I mean, that sounds incredible. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, we're definitely going to check it out yeah. because I don't think a lot of people really understand the history of behind how Casablanca came. And exactly. so that's fantastic, and I'm glad somebody did make the story because it, it, it's a great film, and the story should be told. Um, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and I hope a lot of people see it. Well, this is a good sign because this was our first festival, and. Uh, and we won the grand prize, so uh, hopefully this is a sign of what's to come. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, and as it progresses and as it goes on, definitely, we'd love to have you back on to talk about it as yeah, it progresses definitely. and kind of and kind of gets out there and people see it and talk about it. We'd love to have you back on to talk about it more. Full disclosure: Logan and I have seen both the Nun and Book Club. This is true. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, we 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 enjoyed both. Um, we actually reviewed them both, and and and, and uh, yeah, we we loved them. I thought you and Book Club uh, as the dance instructor was fantastic. Yeah, it was honestly, um, awesome. Thank you. Because I, I think you know. It, it's a huge, it's an important role to that couple's relationship mm-hmm. and their storyline. And I thought it was, it, it was the way you played the character. It, it was just hilarious. Yeah. And, and the interaction <laughs> that you had with those, with the, it, it was brilliant. It, it, yeah. We Aww. thoroughly enjoyed the film. Um, Thank you. I'm yeah. glad you enjoyed it. I love the film. I love that film. Yeah. It, it I, I'll tell you what. And uh, <laughs> We were kind of in a theater, and it was a bit of an older skewing audience, and a lot of women and everything, and they were just having a hoot. They were yeah. laughing, and it was hysterical. So it made it really fun for us, of yeah. course. And then we just kind of, yeah, it it just congratulations because it's a great film. Thank you. Um, with a great Thank cast, you. and yeah. and you did fantastic in it. So yeah, um, and we would highly recommend people to go see it because it, it it is a good time. It's a it's a fun film. It is worth it. It's a great time, and it's so great seeing these ladies and that and knowing that they actually became close friends through. Right. shooting the film. Awesome. It's also yeah. amazing. And then Andy Garcia and Elisa Silverstone. It's just such an amazing cast. Yeah. And, and it was such an honor to be part of this group of people and then also to be part of the story of this one couple played by Craig T. Nelson and Mary Steenburgen. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so, okay, I got an, a Craig T. Nelson because I'm a huge fan yeah. from Parenthood, <laughs> from Coach, from Incredibles. Yeah. I mean, like everything he's ever been. What's he like? I mean, is he is he oh. as nice a guy as he comes across? I mean, what yeah, I, what was it like know, working with know, him? He's, ex- he's exactly who he, you know, is in like the Parenthood, like just a oh, warm, kind, oh. soft spoken. That's co- awesome. Co- very quiet. Really? Um, you know, yeah, yeah, but not like in a way that you know, like uh, I've met, you know, I've worked with like um, Jeff Bridges, mm-hmm. and he he was quiet. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, but in a way where he was playing his guitar and like he was very focused. And right, right. Rachel Nelson was like super complimentary and um, just very, very supportive. And at the end of the shoot, he came up to me and said, "Lily, uh, what you did today was a huge accomplishment. It's not easy to to do a to to do scenes where you're, you know, I was a dance instructor and I'm not a dance instructor. I right, dance. I studied dance most of my life, but to you know, you're in a sense." taking charge of a scene and these two giant, you know, legends of actors are there and you're telling them what to do. Right. I was like, can I do this? Can I like take charge and do this? And I, you know, and, and, and it was really nice to hear that feedback that I did. You kind of just got to do it. You know, you can't be like overly polite or like genteel about it. Just got to say, turn frame and get up and let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know. And then playing somebody who's trying to teach people who can't dance. Yeah. So that's like hilarious yeah. in itself. And you did a yeah. phenomenal job. I mean, I, seriously, like your your role of the teacher was one of the the best parts of the film, yeah. I thought, honestly. Oh, my gosh. Um, thank you. Oh, no, that's you're amazing. welcome. I mean, like I said, I, I the interaction that you had with, with just even Craig T. Nelson and the whole thing at the end yeah. when he's like comes up and surprises her. And I, it was just brilliant. It the whole yeah. Thing, yeah. It's beautiful. That made me cry when he showed up. <laughs> <laughs> On his motorcycle and his costume. Yes, it was a good part. It was a good part. It was. And then the nun. Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, what'd you think? Uh, yeah, we 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 loved the nun. I mean, we were yeah, having a good time with the nun as well. Yeah. It just yeah, we we loved Frenchie. Yeah. <laughs> Frenchie was hysterical. Yeah. Um, yeah, we Frenchie's loved how awesome. it, 
how we went back and forth kind of between horror and comedy because there was a lot yes. of comedic relief. Yes. Well, there was room for it in this particular Definitely. movie. And I, as we were working on it, you know, uh, James Wan was on set and he was saying, um, you know, if there's, if there's any of our movies that there's room for this kind of thing in or, you know, more of, more of it, it's this one. So Definitely. let's just go for it. And so I think everybody just really just wanted to have a good time yeah. and make something fun yeah. right. as well as well as scary. Yeah, and right, I exactly. Achieved, I think it achieved both where you can laugh, but you know, I think I think that horror films, I think it's more terrifying in a way when you can have that release of a, a laugh now and again and then and then go back to being freaked out. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You're tense the whole time. And you kind of like, I, I, I do anyway, I zone out when I, yeah. when there's too many scares. Yeah. I just, kind of shut down and i just like oh, yeah yeah you know, but that's just me no no we agree wholeheartedly and and i mean because there were some intense scenes i mean when he's buried alive in the coffin and you know the the hanging and and i mean it's some intense bunch, stuff so yeah. to have that relief like you said to kind of wake the audience a little back away from the yeah absolutely and yeah. what what our one of our favorite parts is you know like uh Holy shit, the holiest. I mean, that's yeah. a great line yeah. to just kind of lighten the whole thing up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I met Damien Bashir uh, at the premiere because I didn't have any scenes with him, but yeah. um, he's such a lovely guy. And right. He awesome me to on hear. Instagram, and I was like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a, such a nice, you know, Yeah, gesture. it's a nice and, moment. Like, uh, just even wrote me, said it was nice to meet you, and... Just such a gentleman, polite polite man that's cool well that's good and i mean it sounds like you 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 it, it's it's great to hear it sounds like you have a lot of fun on all of the sets yeah, and, exactly. and you do kind of develop relationships and have and have a you, you know a camaraderie with the people well you know i think that you know someone told me this once and i was like a little bit turned off by you know that we have the best job in the world as actors and i have to start to agree you know uh we to be on set, I mean, who doesn't dream of being an actor and being on set and right. having the story, you know, being able to tell the story in that way. I mean, we love actors. Mm -hmm. I love actors. I look up to these people and the fact that I get to work with them is such a perk. But, you know, even just to be on set, the, the vibe that's on set, that creative uh, collaboration is the best feeling for me in the world. Yeah. So, Definitely. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, there's, there, it, it, there, there can be conflict and there can be, um, you know, tension. But generally speaking, everybody on set is there because they want to be there. Exactly. Because they right. want to be part of something like this. Exactly. So there's, there's on uh, most sets I've worked on. There's a lot of gratitude and a lot of joy and mm -hmm. a lot of like, holy crap, are we really? Doing really this, here and are doing we really this. living our dreams right. and making these movies that exactly. millions of people are gonna watch and hopefully like. And con you're connecting to people, not just the people you're working with, but then the people who watch the film and right. who then rent the film. Exactly. Yeah. I, 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 good. I, a great explanation and a, and a great description because we've had we've had other guests on the show too who describe it that way that your art connects with people. Yeah. And that you do it to you know as an a form. It is a, an expression of art or a form of entertainment, but you're also on a on a level reaching people that you see, that see it and can somehow inspire people or do that. So I, I love people who describe it that way because that, that's the way I look at it. You know, at, while it is entertainment and I enjoy seeing a film, the art speaks to me. That's why we do what we do and why we're in the industry and, and exactly. do the things because, you know, we do look at it that way. Um, so yeah. it's nice to hear. It's nice to hear that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you feel the same way. Of it's course. true. Yeah, it, it really Honestly. is. Um, so television, you've also done a lot of television and on some, uh, you've been on some big stuff. You um, Westworld, uh, Law and Order, SVU, ER, um, what would you say the biggest difference is, or do you do you prefer television over film, or film over television, or kind of walk through the process of what you feel the biggest differences are between that? Well, um, uh, hmm, I guess there's um different, you know, just from the format, there's different uh, vibe vibe. I would say, mm -hmm. um, film sets I think are a lot slower. Although I do have to say that being on a lot of indie features where the pace is so fast because the budget is lower and you have to 
get all of your scenes shot, all of the pages done, um, in a way that can be similar to TV, whereas a show like Westworld, where we shot on film and where the budget was so big and where, you know, I really felt like they were taking their time. Right. Like we, we had time. So it felt more like a movie set. It felt more like being on the Martian. Yeah. Um, so, so there's a lot of crossovers right now. Yeah, I mean, there is there's a lot of, so I, I would say that it just depends on the budget. It depends on what we're shooting, what we're shooting on depends on the, the people at the helm, what's important to them, where the priorities are. Yeah. 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 The <laughs> determining Honestly. personalities of the, of the film. So I, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, I've, you know, things like ER and, Sure. Uh, Law and Order. They're so well, or such well oiled machines. Exactly. Right. They yeah. move so smoothly and calmly exactly. and paced. Uh, whereas, like, you know, I was on Westworld season one, so right. um, I definitely felt like it was a, a, a team learning about each other, mm-hmm. but Absolutely. also working very, very well together in a very excited, knowing that we're creating something amazing, yeah. shooting on film, which is to me like, such a dream yes such a dream come yeah. true because it's such a such a different feel yeah oh i i, I love you so much uh, <laughs> i'm a film guy i i'm a big film guy yeah. i'm i'm old school and i just feel like like you just said it's a whole different world a whole different experience and and for me Anytime I get to work with film or the film format, it's just so much better to me. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. I love old yeah, school. Yeah, I actually I recently met with a uh, a gentleman who works with Kodak. Oh, wow. Steve Bellamy, and he showed me this picture. He works with the Nolans, and mm-hmm. he works with uh, like he worked with John Krasinski. The Quiet Place was filmed on film, right? And I was like, yeah. I didn't know that, yeah. but when I when I think about the film. Because I wasn't thinking that when I was watching it. Right. When I think about the film, the feeling I get is has so much more depth. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. just even remem- remembering the film has so much more dimension and mm-hmm. warmth, such a different feel and vibe than like films that I know that were filmed uh, with the same budget but were filmed digitally. Like, and it's not even like you're watching it in Europe, but you, the feeling of the film, the, right. what, the, what you walk away with. And he showed me, and Steve Bellamy showed me uh, a picture. And I was like, what is this? He's like, this side is film and this side is digital. And the digital one was this really pretty colorful sort of pris- prismic uh, pattern. Mm-hmm. The film one was this sort of green, globe, globular, organic uh, looking thing. It was alive. Right. It looks so live. So when you break it down to the smallest, you know, particles, film is alive and digital is not so much. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Honestly. What what you're capturing is a, is alive if it's good acting and if it's real and truthful. But the actual material itself that it's being captured on, it's completely different. It is. It really it is. is. Wow, that's that's <laughs> got to be like one of the best descriptions yeah. I've heard, especially coming from somebody in front of the camera yeah, that, that realizes behind the yeah, camera and the beauty works. of it. And the, again, I think it goes back to the philosophy of looking at what you do as art and, and a living, breathing exactly. piece of performance. Uh, yeah, wow, that was a great description. Yeah, that was beautiful. Well, all, 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 he ha- all I had to do was see this picture. And yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. wait. Uh, he was like, which one do you think is digital and which one? I'm like, well, this one's green and kind of like, doesn't look like, it looks like some kind of fungus. And this <laughs> one is colorful and bright and it's prismic and it's pa- got a pattern, whereas the other one doesn't have much rhyme or yeah, reason. Right. I said, well, I don't, I'm, I'm going to, I have no idea. I, I, I didn't even want to just guess. He's like, this green one, this live looking one is filmed. Right. Awesome. That's so, so if awesome. you see this picture, if you can find it anywhere, maybe Kodak has it on, on their website. It's unbelievable. Now, backtracking a little bit, you were talking about the different pacing between a short film, feature films, and television. Which do you prefer, the fast-paced television or the slower-paced film? I love being on set so much, and I love filming so much that I, I tend to like to take my time and chew, chew my food and 
you know, um, but definitely. But as far as the fast pace, I mean, it would also depend on uh, the role. You know, if it's a quick job in and out, um, or if it's like uh, you know a recurring role mm-hmm. where you. I just, I just like having time to like really talk about stuff, even if it's before. So the the pace, you know, you can get you know, the best shots on the first take, and right. I've become more of a first take kind of girl. Right. But then I also like the third take. So it's like always the first take and the last take are the best. Yeah. But because they're but they're always so different. Right. 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 And just spending that much more time, I guess, connects you more with the character, right? I could imagine. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. The more time you have, the more energy you give something. Right. Whatever it is in 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 life, it's whether it's a relationship, whether it's um, a you know a character in a movie, a role you're playing, whether it's you know you're developing something for you know technology, whatever it is. The more the more time you have with it, the more you apply yourself. The more you communicate about it, mm-hmm. which is why I love rehearsing. Uh, the better I think the product is going to be. And then, you know, uh, I know I've spoken to directors and like, I, it's my experience too, that the first take is the best, but if there's preparation behind it, I mean, you can always rely on happy accidents and those happen all the yes, time. Definitely. But you know, if you've ever read Sidney Lumet's book on, uh, directing, uh, he rehearses with his actors. And one of my biggest regrets is when, uh, I, he wanted to meet me for a role on 21. Uh, was it Twenty One Center Street? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that TV show. Yeah. So I was in, I was like eighteen years old. I was in love, and I was running back to Europe to see my love. Uh, right. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, no, I got a ticket. I got a ticket to Europe. I'll see you later. But like, yeah, like rehearsal. You know, re- rehearsal is is such an expression of the love of. The craft. Of, it is of definitely. It is. Oh, yeah. The the tragic love story, the chase and love, and exactly. Oh, that's <laughs> oh my god. That's a great story. Yeah, though. that's a honestly. great story. Okay, so let, let's. I, I know. I know. Um, I, a couple of questions, just kind of talking about the industry and how you, it's kind of changed and, and evolving, and and how it's kind of made the move. You brought up digital and film and stuff, and how it's kind of gearing towards streaming now, and the the big battle of the consolidation of the studios. I guess now you mentioned Instagram and that you're on Instagram and you're on social media and everything. How are you with that? Have you found that that this this big emphasis on you have to be on social media? If you if you don't have this many followers, you're not gonna get it over this person who does and this have you found that to be true have you found that to add a different aspect or challenge to your audition process or what the industry your approach to the industry no so so it's it hasn't been a change for you you kind of you you still approach it the same way and and are you a fan of the social media aspect of it now or or it's well, just well let's just say i've been sucked into it Okay. And I've let I've let that happen. So I do post and I do share what I'm working on. I'm not saying it hasn't helped me stay in touch with my collaborators right. and some fans. You know, I don't have um I haven't put too much energy into gaining followers. I know there's an art to that as well. But um I I was just reading an article by Kira Knightley and she's not on social media at all and she made makes perfect sense. She says, Why am I gonna put something out there it's going to have hundreds of comments and people some people being positive some people being negative and that's on my phone and with me in my purse and it's on my person and you can't get away from that right and and that's so true and i was thinking like oh man maybe i should just stop this whole thing altogether and just you know let my work speak for itself and not have to post about oh i'm on set oh i'm at a premiere but it's also for me, it's been a way to stay in touch with like old classmates and right. friends, and definitely you really feel connected to these people, but yet you're not. So it's it's like a double edged sword, I would say. It's two sides of the coin. It's absolutely it's good and it's bad, that. and it just it's, it can be a time sucker, and it's also a way to spy on people. You know, like you can see <laughs> what people like. Right, and yeah, don't like, exactly. And it's just it can suck you in, and like I know some people who live their lives on on Instagram, and I think that's probably taking away from from time or moments spent in the present, right? You know, in real in reality, not the virtual world. Right, definitely. Well, and as I was just thinking while you were saying that it could also, it could help you, but then you could also self destruct by posting the wrong thing. So. 
Yeah, definitely a double-edged sword. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, you can post something that turns someone off or you have an opinion that differs with someone and where you can sit down face-to-face and have a discussion about it. Um, you post something and then that person might feel compelled to just say, well, I don't agree with this person. Right. I'm going dis- to you know, disown them or you know, disassociate from them, whereas it could have been a conversation an exactly. important conversation where both parties learn about it. So it's this echo chamber effect as well. Exactly. Yeah, agreed. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to kind of turn table just a little bit and kind of talk a- away from the industry a little bit and talk about some stuff you do outside of it. Uh, also, we noticed um that you're that you do a lot of work with autism and the autism uh, autism spectrum and and the um children and how did you get involved in that? Was there a particular reason why you kind of gravitated toward autism or um how did how did that all come about? And and thank you for that, by the way. Um, we think we th- we love that that you're involved in that and. Are are, are, are actively you. engaged. Um, so how did that all kind of come about? That was sort of something that found me. I had a friend that I'd met who was an actress, Carice Hutchins, and she started a foundation called uh, Guidance Autism, guidanceautism.com. We teach dance to kids with autism. Saturday mornings, I'm teaching tomorrow's class. And um, what we do is we use dance and it's very hands-on, so we, we position the kids. We teach them the basics like plies, releves, but we also have a lot of free dance. We have dancing across the floor. It's just a way to have fun and disengage our brains, but engage our, you know, at the same time, like, engage our bodies and our freedom, freedom of, of expression, you know, where, where it's just a new channel of self-expression for, for these children and um, and also a great opportunity for us to connect with them. Like I feel very fortunate to be part of this organization now for about eight years. Oh, nice. And um, yeah, and just incorporating different, trying new things. Like we have a respite program for the parents. I give Reiki healing to the parents um, if they, you know, if they opt in for it, uh, even to the children if they want it. So it's just like, a really fun space Definitely. to be together and um, with some great music and dance and scarves and then free dance and, you know, just fun stuff. Chicken dance. Stuff <laughs> there that you we go. do together that ah. we look forward to every week. That's yeah, so absolutely. Awesome. And, and it's so nice. I mean, I think it's important for, because you seem so uh, very appreciative of, like you said, that you get to be on a set and live your dream and do the things. And, and it's always nice to, to see somebody that's so appreciative of what they get to do, but then also give back yes. and to help other people and, and to do I, I, much respect. I, I mean, I have a lot of respect for people who do that and, and can, Thank are you. fortunate I think it goes, that. yeah, it goes hand in hand um, because, you know, it's easy to get caught up with your own stuff. And it then is, huge perspective. I don't have my own children. Um, I would like to sooner than later. Um, but I, I, you know, I don't know what it's like to have kids, let alone kids with, um, with autism or something, something else, yeah. right. you know, uh, any kind of something that, that can be considered a setback. Um, we try to find, we try to help these kids and their, these parents connect through dance. Mm-hmm. And, and for me, the reward is seeing, seeing these kids um, do things for the first time, like how, like clap or stomp or, you know, a roll across the floor oh, or yeah. do a plie or learn the difference between first and second position. Um, so it's just, uh, it's life, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. That, yeah, beautiful. that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, going uh, down on your Instagram page, I noticed that you posted something about Ed Asner's uh Family Center and Friends Poker Tournament. Did you go to that event? Yes, I did. And uh, I went to uh, an event a couple nights ago, a a premiere of a movie called Randy's Canvas, Mm -hmm. which is about an autistic young adult um, growing up and falling in love. And um, Autism Speaks had another poker tournament. There's a lot of, uh, um, luckily, there are a lot of great, great, people who are championing this yes yes um, definitely you know helping families helping families cope and having programs and resources and i you know if if i weren't an actor i would probably become involved in this as well mm-hmm. in something related to helping these families and children with autism 
Oh, that's oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That yeah, yeah. Okay, so I got I got it. Did you play poker or did you just go? I did play poker. All right. Uh, well, then I do have a question because we recently talked to Ed, and Ed admitted that his skills weren't so good, so he stole a lot of money. <laughs> okay. Did, did, did you get Did you get taken from Ed, or how'd you do? <laughs> I wasn't at a table with Ed, but I did meet him. Yeah. Uh, he's such a lovely, lovely person. Yeah, he, he was. was so sweet. Yeah, he was, and he's a, he was a great interview as well. But he was hilarious. He's like, yeah, my skill level. I don't really win, so I just steal a lot of money from him. <laughs> 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 so, well, listen, uh, again, just thank you for doing that. It, it's wonderful to hear and, yes. and and much success for that as well, as much as your entertainment, much success for your continued work with that too. I think it's wonderful that you do that. Mm -hmm. Um, thank so you. what, what's next? So what's next for Lily? What, what you got coming up? Well, um, there's a couple of movies that are in the early stages of development. Um, and then I just, I'm continually auditioning mm -hmm. and, uh, also working on some projects, um, mostly short films, as just developing them and and then seeing what happens with our feature curtis and um, yeah. So I don't know where the next I don't know what the next next thing is, but I, there are a lot of opportunities that I'm very very excited about. I really 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 I got to tell you I'm interested in in, in the Curtis film and I'm excited to have you back on and talk about mm -hmm. that as it progresses. Thank you. Um because I am old school and I'm all about <laughs> Casablanca and the golden era of Hollywood and so to kind of see these things we I would love to have you back on to talk about that as it keeps going. Yes. Um, yeah, I would love that. Maybe when the film is released in the states hopefully we're still looking for distribution in the states. Awesome. Yeah. So, that's awesome. That's awesome. And one last thing before we let you go, we always ask our guests, what would you what advice would you give someone trying to break into the industry? Um, that's interesting. I uh it depends on the person and where they are and what their where their interests lie, but mm -hmm. um you know, there's very basic steps you have to take. You have to get headshots, uh start working go on Actors Access or LA Casting and just submit for student films, get material to make a reel. Yes. And then once you have your pictures and your reel, um, approach smaller agencies or bigger agencies. Um, and then also network with people, find people who are network. making uh, content, offer to help in any way you can, whether it's, you know, providing a location or just being on set volunteering to even be an extra exactly just be around what you want to be absolutely exactly uh, that's the yeah absolutely i, I don't think <laughs> it can be said any better than that be around what you want to be that's that's yeah. the best way to say it best way yep. to say it yep don't 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 um how do i put it like it's you know sometimes you find yourself being the the, the best one in the room and then when that happens it's time to graduate and mm -hmm. find people who challenge you exactly and, um but also give back so 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 chill in that space for as long as you can inspire some young people mm -hmm. or you know or or just people starting out or people but but always try to be around people who challenge and inspire and that you can learn from Right. And I think that's the absolute best way to, to wrap it all up because you just said, I think for me, the two most important things for a human being, not just in the craft or what they're trying, but in life, you should always try to keep learning and growing and improve, but you should also always try to inspire someone to do the same if you're in a position exactly. to do that. And I think that you, you wrapped it up perfectly there. You continue Thank to you. grow and continue to inspire. And I think if you can do that in life in general, you're doing okay. Yeah. Thank you for giving me the space to, to formulate that. Cause you know, when you have an interview, you start to get clear within yourself when you mm -hmm. talk to people about it, like-minded people or whatever, or people who aren't like-minded, but, um, thanks for giving me the space to come up with that. Of Cause course. I think that's really how I feel. And that's really, you know, where I have to focus. Yeah. Yeah. My energy. Well, you're very welcome and thank you for sharing. I think we yes. we do have a lot of young listeners on our in our, in our base and they they are inspired. So we we always look to try to get people on the show who who inspire and who who say that you can do this and you can grow and you can and and so thank you. I I'm sure that a lot of our listeners today are going to be very inspired by your story and how you've been able to move and do the things that you've done. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to share that message. 
We yes, appreciate definitely. it very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Have a beautiful, beautiful evening. You too. Thank and you well, as well. Uh, open invite. You come back anytime you want to. And we, it was a, our you. pleasure. Yep, yep. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh huh. You betcha. Have a great one. You too. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Wow. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was pretty to, awesome. To be honest with you. I mean, yeah. Wow. Just like that's a very like unique approach. Yeah, exactly. Of how, you to know, the industry in general and to life. Into life, mm-hmm. exactly. Like not even having any children, but spending all of this time and effort towards a great cause is just amazing. Yeah. And I mean, I really seriously liked how she wrapped it up and the way she described it is like, if you become the best person in the room, it's time to move on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that's the exactly. brilliant way to say it. It's like you are, you never stay on that plateau. Mm-hmm. If you're at the high, if you think you're at the highest you can get, you're done. Exactly. You got to keep going and exactly. going and going. And, and I just, I love people who give back. I mm-hmm. love people who inspire or want to inspire. And she seems to be very yeah. along those lines of wanting to give exactly. back to the community and, exactly. and do the things. Agreed yeah, what a completely. wonderful guest. Yes, thank you fantastic. for coming on the show. That was awesome. All right, now I think it's time for our top five segments. And this week we got original shows from streaming services. Mm. Yeah, like Netflix originals, Hulu's yeah, originals. It's a, it's, a, it's a good one, but as usual, a hard one. Yeah, yeah, and it's getting tougher. Are you sure we can't just switch to the top ten? Eh, it's like a lot, 10? bro. It's a yeah. lot. No, because I only have four this week. <laughs> <laughs> you can't change to ten. Yeah. You'll probably get more as we list them off. You're probably. That's like, probably right. true. Yeah. Like oh, those. Yeah, yeah. yeah because well, I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you right now. One of mine is grouped. It's a several shows grouped because if not. It would have been my whole top five. Like, mm. I mean, you can't. I don't know. We make the rules, so That's if you right. want to have a few more than five, it's okay. That's okay. This is our show. We do what we want. That's right. Boom. Our show. <laughs> Boom. Wait, okay. Uh, who's first? I guess we'll stick with the trend, right, All ladies? Right. Yeah. Right. Ladies. So, um, for I, like, only, <laughs> I only have one from Hulu, which is kind of sad. I know they have more, but it's a really good one. Future Man. Future Man, yeah, I like that one. I keep forgetting to put that on my other favorite shows because mm-hmm. it is up there with regular shows too. But um, and of course, Stranger Things, which I've put on everything. But I slashed it with Dark. Have y'all seen that one? On Netflix? I've heard about Negative. it though. It's really good. It's very similar kind of feel, but it's German. But it's about like a mysterious town kind mm-hmm. of set. Like, well, it, it is a time jumping thing. Anyway, it's really good. So it's a time um, jumping kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Last Kingdom. Holy <laughs> shit, that's a good show. Yeah. Wow. I've seen that. One. It's really. Good. I have I have not, but that sounds like a hell of an yeah. investment. It's, a, it's like, like well, it's about like the um like in England, but before England was solidified, and it was still like just a bunch of different tribes of people, and they were like fighting over England. Oh wow! So it's really good. It's, okay. it's set in like the eight hundreds. Yeah. Um, glow. I love glow. Glow. Um, good the Santa Clarita Diet. Because mm, I thought that one was yeah, that one's pretty funny. funny. Yeah. And then I have like a six one kind of like honorable mention because I haven't finished it yet. But Maniac just came Mani- out. Yeah, and, uh, well, I have my gosh. I, I, yeah, uh, that's one I'm gonna binge watch. I just watched the first episode yeah. last night. I would have watched more, but I was really tired. Right. But it was really good so far. So I have a feeling it's. Gonna yeah. Be see, man. I feel like that one would be on my list, but I haven't watched exactly. it. Exactly. So it it it's looks very interesting. Crazy. It's yeah. one of those ones where you really have to pay attention though, and like yeah. in the background and stuff because Kevin uh-huh. was like catching stuff in the background. Like, Did you see that poster? Did you see that? Right. Shit. So we kind of figured out it's like. It's what people in the seventies probably imagine the future to be like. Is mm. kind of what it is. Like it's yeah. sort of futuristic. And then yeah. it's got. Weird, like, I mean, it's a phenomenal way. cast. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I can't imagine it being bad. Yeah. So. And they're 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 killing it so far in the first. Jonah Hill oh, is man. so different than yeah. anything I've ever seen. That's what Honestly, we were just talking about. We were about. just talking about that yesterday when we were prepping for uh, he, our interview. He's got to be seriously one of the most underrated actors. He really yeah. is. I Honestly. think everybody just and, thinks of him Pineapple Express, yeah. Stoner kind yeah. of. This guy can act. He yeah. really oh, yeah. can, yeah, and he can. he's lost a lot of weight too, which I think kind of like adds to the fact that he doesn't even seem like the same person. Yeah. Like, I have to remind Honestly. myself. You that know, that's, that's Brad Pitt. Yeah. Like he, have you ever heard that story? Brad Pitt really got on him on Moneyball or whatever, and saying, "Dude, you've got so much talent, and you can act, and you're just like this great thing." You you gotta you gotta get healthy. Oh, you shit. gotta get healthy because I've, I'm I'm scared for you and you're like get on it, work out, lose the weight, and that yeah. he really inspired him to kind of get behind that healthier lifestyle because he really believed in him about yeah. you can do this. He Damn, looks good. I didn't yeah. Know that. It, but like I said, it, it really seems like a totally different person because he doesn't look or act the same as anything else I've ever seen. But it's really good because you kind of lose yourself in the character, like right. you forget that it's him. Right. Right. So anyway. Good, good, good list. Yeah. yeah, good list. Really good. Tavia took my spot this week of overexplaining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it's good. Okay. Holy <laughs> shit, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. good Official statement. It's such a good show. The question is: Is everybody okay to be gay? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh goodness! I think so. Okay, all right. Okay. I don't know the show. How was it in that the fight for London or England back then? So really good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I have the crown. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Everyone agrees. Most so. expensive Netflix show. Just to put facts mm. out there, uh, over talk about it. Oh, nice. <laughs> we got time this morning. We got time. We got time. Uh, Stranger Things. Because mm. yeah. it's epic. It is. Um, the Gilmore Girls revival. Gilmore Girls, a year in the life. You worked that one so in there. Always. Gilmore Gilmore Girls. Girls. Always. You worked that series. one in. But on Netflix, yeah, the revival uh-huh. was a streaming series. It's an series. original. No, that's what I said. Yeah. You were able to work it in because you got in through the back door. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. like, when oh, When we no. do our favorite city, she's going to be like, Sleepy Hollow. Wait, wait, is that what Stars Hollow. Stars Hollow. Hollow. Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow. 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 Yeah. Hollow. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a while. I forgot. Did you see Lorelai? I just have seen it. It's okay. That sounds epic, It does. The Lorelai and Rory visit Sleepy Hollow. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. And then uh, the headless horse movie. Yeah, be just like, Fuck it, I can't keep up with the dialogue. I'm out of here. <laughs> like I ain't scaring shit. <laughs> like, where does where does he drink coffee? Does he pour it down the neck? We See, don't know. Like, she said in a while though. So you've seen it. I, I have. That's I used good. to watch it in high school. Yeah. So, there you go. Okay. Mm. <laughs> and then, yeah. fuck you. Damn. And then uh, that was yeah. affectionate from mm. the gaffer. Apparently, okay. <laughs> shit. <laughs> and then marvelous Miss Maisel. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. marvelous Miss Maisel. Yeah. And nice. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't come up with a fifth one. No, Logan, what's your five? No, it's okay, we got extra for you. <laughs> yeah. so we got really? Because you, you couldn't translate your? Have you not watched it? Maybe I was going to say you could take your Gilmore Girls and 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 give some love for Rory with her new one, Handmaid's Tale. I haven't um, watched see? it yet. Yeah. Mm. I have heard well, it's really good. Too. Yeah, I, was about to say, I have it's heard like, it's really I, good. I'm still so behind for not having internet for a while, yeah. and then only having maybe one streaming store. Right, right. right. Exactly. So it's like it kind of limits me to. It's a pretty not, epic show, though. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to just throw like, that uh, out there and take my word for it, you can add that to your phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'll yeah. add it to my uh, IMDb watch later. List. There you, there you yeah. go. It just keeps growing and growing. This segment brought to you by the fine folks at Amazon. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Mine, uh, Stranger Things, Castle Rock, Ozark, The Crown, and Punisher. Damn, you mm. blew through them. Mm. No yeah. explanation. He yeah. just like <laughs> boom, boom, boom. All right. Ow. So straight to the point. Mine, I think, are pretty quick too. My um. my five is the combined ones. It's all the Marvel Netflix series because mm-hmm. I feel like I can't just ignore any of them i love them all and if i were to list them all that would be my list yeah so all five of them grouped that's number five uh number four um i want to do stranger things i love stranger mm-hmm. things i mean come on yeah uh number three i am going to go with um, the last tycoon i really thoroughly enjoyed the last tycoon um mm. yeah Lily it's Collins. brilliant um, if if, if I, I don't know. I just the the casting Kelsey Grammer, Lily Collins, and uh, Matt Bomer they mm-hmm. were just brilliant. And you guys all know I'm a school uh, old school fan, and I like the golden era of Hollywood. And it's just the whole thing. It's just it was really well yeah. done, really well produced. I loved it. Uh, number two, Thirteen Reasons Why. I Ooh, forgot about um, that one. Damn it! How can you not put? I mean, God, the suicide Shit. scene alone is just is so intense. And season Damn. two was great. Um, so yeah, You're Thirteen shitty. Reasons. And number one, I can. <laughs> I'm going to, number one, do a slash. Are you? So as you can see, I've, I have like 30 of them. But number one is a slash, and it is the crown, obviously, Team team Claire, uh, and team Claire. Uh, House of Cards. Because yeah. let's be honest about it. Let's set aside, because I know everybody now yeah. is cursing at their uh, computer mm, and like, you yeah. know, or their radio and wherever they listen. Set aside Kevin Spacey. Look at it from his performance, yeah, not from the... his douchebagness. Um Without House of Cards, none of it exists. Honestly, it was the first binge show, and it was a yeah. huge success, and it was massively. It and really everybody's was. like jumped on board after that. So without that, it doesn't exist. So Crown and House of Cards. Sam man. Sam man. He's oh. like shit. Did you already do your five? <laughs> yeah, we've done twenty, bro. If you don't have your five by now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I want to put a side note. Uh, two series I really want to catch up is Peaky Blinders. And oh, Black my Mirror. God. I forgot Peaky Blinders. That's a brilliant show oh, if yeah. you guys that, haven't seen yeah. it. Oh, my God. I haven't gotten to see them. They're right there. And, like, they're the next yeah. shows I'm starting, yeah. but I haven't started them yet. Peaky Blinders. And I feel Blinders. so bad for Black Mirror. Tom Hardy Peaky and Peaky Blinders alone is worth it. It's fantastic. I do love Tom Hardy. Yeah. I, yeah. But I have to be different from y'all, so I changed it all the way up. Um, I went with Castlevania. Huge Castlevania fan from video games, and then seeing it come out on anime, and Netflix is doing a really awesome job with it. Hell yeah. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Um, 
Man in the High Castle. Mm, yeah, Man in the High Castle. It's a good one. Take the lead actor from Dark City and yeah, uh, make him where the Germans won. It's really, really interesting. I haven't seen season two, only seen season one, but just that. The premise is alone is oh, good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. Um, making a Murderer. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Anything that can make that. me so upset at our legal justice system. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Oh boy! Like you get on fire at the third to last episode, and yeah. you just go on, just like wind up, you know, burn the whole I, system down. Just a side note: I actually just this morning read an article about the, apparently they're doing a. I think it's Netflix too. They're doing a documentary series about people who falsely confessed. Yeah, and it's oh, another wow. indictment mm-hmm. of the justice system. And why would they do that if they didn't do it? So I, I'll have to look it up and find the name for you. Oh yeah, sure I'll like love it. to watch that. So yeah. I, I would guess even more more mad at our. Justice. Yeah, there you go. Why doesn't it work like Law and Order? Damn it! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but even in order, they like forced confessions and That's they like yeah. put people behind yeah. jail when they weren't supposed to. So even in the series, um, the Santa Clarita Diet. Yeah, it's so good. It is so. I didn't expect to like it that much. I know because it's it's so weird. It is weird. Funny, but like even in the weirdness, you can't help but laugh. But I mean, from from justified on, I'd be basically anything he's in, I love. I mean, he's great. He is good. And Drew Barrymore, come on, it's yeah. Drew Barrymore. Yeah. Drew Barrymore. I mean, it's America's. She's all like, yay! Like, I yeah. accidentally ate him. <laughs> <laughs> like, exactly. And that, like, I know they have a weird relationship because of the whole helping her kill people thing, but right. goals, right? I mean, they goals, have a goals. Relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, like, he really loves her. I need to find her. a woman that will help me kill people. All right, I'd mark that down. I'm gay. I gotta he remember loves that. that woman. <laughs> Oh my goodness! People who mass murder together stay together. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, that old saying. That old saying. Remember that? Okay. And no slash. Uh, Stranger Things, and um, like y'all said earlier, uh, the Crown. Yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody agrees the Crown's probably right now the best. I mean, like, come on. But the weirdness of Stranger Things, the love letter to the eighties, yeah. and to great uh, monster movies. Yeah, and- I mean, yeah. They even brilliant. make a joke about it on uh, Modern Family with their. Uh, Oh, I can't think of their names, but the the gay couple. They were watching it, and one of them got ahead of them in an episode. He was like, "You watched it without me." He was like, "It's it's true life. It's not exactly spoilers." Like, right? It <laughs> like, happened, right? You know, if you know history, <laughs> right. goodness gracious, <laughs> that's Sorry. funny. All right, well, that's an awesome list. I mean, yeah. I still feel like everybody had a slash or an honorable mention, so I feel like we're eventually going to get to. It has to be top ten. Yeah, we'll see though. We'll, we'll see. see. You know what though? I I just want to let the viewers know upcoming upcoming, we're gonna have a fun one. It's gonna be a really fun one coming up. Coming up, uh, our Halloween, our big Halloween show. Yes. We, you know, we're actually, you guys know we re- we record these, and we're going to be recording one on Halloween. We may or may not all be in costume. We'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I'm really excited because if, if you guys couldn't possibly figure it out, duh, our top five that week is going to be top five horror scary movies. Yes. So everybody start thinking now. Okay. Um, and our forever guest is going to join us. Our forever Yay. guest is going to join us. Aww. Rebecca Kennedy will be back on. She's going to participate. Rebecca, get your top five. This time she's got time, though. We yeah. just <laughs> clapped it on her yeah. last time. She's like, Rebecca, you got plenty of time to come up with your top five yes. this time. So it's scary movies or horror movies. Epic. <laughs> but Epic. I was excited. So we're, we're really excited to have her back on. Um, so well, if we come in costume, I have to bring Kevin with me. Oh, yes. yes. Always. Yeah. I, th- I think. Or are you trying to say your costume won't make sense without Kevin? Basically. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Are you guys I mean, going as a mass murdering couple? Yeah, kind <laughs> of. Uh, we're actually. I think. We're, unless we change our mind, we're going to go for um, for Ash versus Evil Dead. Kelly and Ash. Oh my mm. gosh! So. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Makes sense it. How many times does he just roll over to you and say, "That's just pillow talk." <laughs> <laughs> You can find you know, no. one of his most I classic know. lines from the film. But That's I just like, pillow but talk, baby. Nah. <laughs> She's like, nah. nah. She's like, no. nah. What if he does? Nah. <laughs> Only on Halloween. Only on Halloween. Oh. 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 <laughs> Pinky. Oh, my goodness. All right. Anyway. Word, of the day. Word of the day. Word of the day. <laughs> She's all of a sudden. She's like, no, no, remember it's okay to be gay. It's okay to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> burn nerdy, burn nerdy. Word of the day, oh man, word of the day. She is so red. If you can focus on that video, she is so red right now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I do, and I won't remember it three yeah, weeks yeah. from now. So I'm yeah. exactly. So it's fine. It's fine. Well, we have it on recording to that's, remind you. Oh yeah, that's right. Obvious. Keep trying to say ovulate. No. <laughs> ovulate. That's, I think you're confusing what we just talked about with the word of the day. That's not it. <laughs> no, it was a good stuff. Ovulate. 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 
Obviate. Or obviate. 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 There it is. There's no U in it. Okay, obviate. <laughs> yeah, obviate. but I keep trying to add that U and obviate. <laughs> Uh, we promise none of us have been drinking. No. no. Except for coffee. It's, it is nine in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're just tired. Yes. Okay. Anyway. I'm we're sorry. I'm tired. over here with a monster myself. Yeah, we should. Uh, full disclosure, just in case we do sound overly crazy or yeah. more crazy than we... We're recording this thing like way early in the morning and we're like afternoon and evening creatures. So maybe this sounds... Well, especially late night. I was... We didn't go to sleep till about two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't know how we're here. Damn, bro, that's crazy. This whole show has been uh, recorded while sleep talking. Yes, it's fantastic. Yeah. All right, so to prevent or make unnecessary, right? Right. Boom. I like it. I like it too. Same. There's a lot that we could obviate. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I should have wrote down in my notation notes as obviate. <laughs> V8. Oh Would have helped. Oh, my goodness. All right. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's time for a little box office. A little something, something. A little something, something. Box office. Um, this now, is... I'm just going to say it. Because, I mean, we really should let people know. This one, we're, we're not only are we doing it early in the morning, but we're pre-recording it really early because we're going to be in New York. Yeah. By the time you guys hear this thing, we'll actually be in either New York or Washington, D.C. Yeah. So... That's why we're doing it. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah. Because you're going to have to try to throw down some box office predictions, and it's got like a week before it's like this. See, I'll, I can, I'll throw out some predictions, but I can't do like one, two, three. I can't put them in a list. That's no, pretty how hard. How do you know? Exactly. You, I mean, you usually have some data going into exactly. it because you see how they perform in a little bit. Yeah, uh, this is going to be interesting. No idea. We All don't... right, little Cam has got to go do a haircut, apparently. Roll Let's out. Bye-bye, bye, little. <laughs> Roll out. Dude. She's a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> Is jump, 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 I do have jump, a quick question for you, though. Have you seen the trailer for Mandy? No, I'm not. No. Oh, Check snap. that shit out. Oh, oh man. Oh. Uh, oh, it's shit. Nicolas Cage's new movie. Yeah. But apparently, oh, it's yeah, I have like heard really, that's pretty really intense. Good and yeah. weird. Oh, yeah. shit. Well, shit I mean, it's weird. Nicolas Cage. Bye. But, I mean... And I want to say all the weird. listeners at home and viewers, if you heard that weird noise, that was the mouth coming through on two microphones so powerful. It oh. sounded two like he was in a tunnel. Everyone. Yeah, that, that, like, that mm. microphone being set there, all of a sudden, I started hearing. <laughs> There's a <laughs> lot of that man that's powerful. Oh, We're just going to move on. Oh. Let's do those box oh. Oh, let's, Okay. Uh, I mean, Lil' Cam is oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, Hellfest. Uh, at eight to ten million little women, five to ten million night school. That one with Kevin Hart. Mm. Um, I think that will probably be the top. It's going to battle between that one and Smallfoot, the new animated one oh, that's coming out. Yeah, oh, I heard yeah. that's going to be pretty good. So those both are going to be around like twenty to twenty-five million. But the box office has been a uh, rather slow. Wait, did you put recently. Life Itself on there? Where do you think it's going to end up? I have no idea because that movie already came out. And, uh, well, I, yeah. yeah, but you, movies you, that are already yeah. out: The Nun, Peppermint, Predator, A Simple Favor, White Boy Rick, Life Itself, and a clock with or a house <laughs> with a clock in its walls. Change yeah. your name. Change your name. That's but a too yeah, late for that. like I said, I cannot. I don't. I can't do one, two, three, four, five. I can't do it. Well, it's I mean, it would far. be hard even if you, yeah. if you were doing it at the normal time. I mean, because you got James Corden and Channing Tatum and all that with Smallfoot, and then you exactly. got Kevin Hart with. I mean, that's gonna. And be, we're also so early. It's on trying to do predictions because we that, don't know what this weekend's done. That's so right. Yeah. yeah. It's so, kind of hard exactly. to go, oh, well, the, yeah. Yeah. so stay tuned. Friday's so numbers tuned. hasn't been reported yet. And just like the same with Billboard, like I'm guessing Drake is still going to be number one on the Hot 100 so with 11 weeks. Uh, right now it's at 10 weeks, but he holds the record for most number of weeks on the Billboard Top 100. That's, yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. I, impressive. I think it has a lot to do with streaming. And That's... so, wh- wh- have you changed your mind? Because I know we're getting ready to review on our review show. Is it worth it? Is it Paul worth McCartney's it? Which new album? Yeah, but when you hear this, that will already be out. So go check that out on <laughs> Is It Worth It? Uh, YouTube, CrazyAntFilms dot com. Yeah. But so what I was going to say is, uh, have you changed your mind? Because you were hinting that you didn't think it would remain at number one on the albums chart. Yeah, I don't. It... I don't think it'll remain number one. No. No. I mean, like I said when we were talking off air. Uh, if Eminem's Kamikaze didn't remain number one for two weeks, I don't think this will remain number one for two weeks. It just seems like they don't stay up there. Since we started doing this, that's when we started deep diving into the billboard and shit. But since we started doing this, it seems mm, like the dumb. most um, albums stay up there is two weeks. So we <laughs> shall see. 
so um, random. It's just like, and just very slay. I don't even know how to describe how that was inserted right there. It's just like, oh, all right. <laughs> Coming off on. On so, Crazy Ant shows, we're going to be deep diving. So. Well, man, this has been like a freaking awesome yeah, show. Yeah, it really so, has. All right, well, honestly. you know what you got to do. You got to tell right. where to find us. Make sure to follow us on all social media handles, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, our website, uh, Facebook, Crazy Ant Film Company, on Twitter, Crazy Ant Films, on Instagram, Crazy underscore Ant underscore Films, and on YouTube, Crazy Ant Films, Apple Podcasts, Crazy Ant Film, or Inside the Crazy Ant Farm, and Google Play Music, Inside the Crazy Ant Farm. Make sure to give us five stars, like us, comment, comment, do all that craziness, and... We actually have a website that it's thundering outside. It <laughs> creeped me out a little bit. We have a website, crazyantfilms.com. And you know who visits our website all the time? Not really, but near future. Oprah! Oprah!